Welcome to the Mopecast. Everyone's been waiting to have uh, Andrew Richman back on, so he's on. What's up, Andrew? Hi. And Jeremy Mode. I'm here. Hi, Jeremy. Still, by far, you're my favorite episode. Thanks, man. You're yeah, my I, favorite. I'm pretty sure everyone... Uh, <laughs> would, would everyone just one. laughs at my story of, the sh- of me shitting all over myself. Yeah. I don't... You know what's funny is, like, we... Everybody has like a bad shit story. I've never, I've, I don't have any bad shit stories. Well, you, you got to try harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not. I don't. Yeah. There's not one one bad shitting story I can think of. Like I've gotten to the point where I'm in the car, like, oh god, but never, I've never had, shit myself. I've had really close calls. I think I shit myself one time in high school, and that was pretty terrible. But it wasn't because I was able to escape without anyone noticing. <laughs> it was great. That doesn't make it a good story then. That's what <laughs> I experienced, but nobody saw so. Yeah, unfortunately, I have a lot of shit stories. How come on all of your podcasts, it's nothing but shit stories? It's, it's masturbating, episode, it's great. masturbating and shit stories. Masturbating and shit stories. And actually, lately, it's been a lot of drugs. A lot of drugs. We should do all three right <laughs> now. <laughs> this is the last time we saw you. I've done mushrooms. You did, you did, you did mushrooms? Yeah, how'd you like that? It was good, because I haven't done them in like 10 years. Ooh. Or 11 or 12, something like that. It was awesome. But I went to it with the intent of trying to work some shit out. Because I'd heard and read that it's used for therapies in other countries, mm. and but usually when you do it, it's with like a shaman, mm. and I can understand why now because those negative roads you go down with shrooms definitely could have been a bad trip had I not been able to know that I was on a damn drug. And what do they tell you, like the shaman? Like I don't, I don't understand how they they're there to walk you through the experience to keep you out of to keep you out of those really bad places where you're going to put yourself into a negative thought process and just spiral out of control. But are, t- are they telling you like what to think? Like I don't. No, no, no. To be honest, I don't know what they do because I've never experienced it. I just read about kind of what they do, and it's more that it's like having someone there to anchor you, keep you in the right, the right direction. Yeah, yeah but I mean that's. But I mean, how do they know where you're going? You're just sitting there zoning out, and they're like, "So well, no, because they're going to be talking to you." Did I you think see it's crazy cool? how when you do, when you're young when you do drugs, it's all about having fun. But like when you get older, you actually will start thinking <laughs> Therapeut- more depth. Therapeutically yeah. use drugs. Well, I think about like when I <clears throat> when I used to smoke weed when I was younger. I used to never think about anything deep. Now when I get high, I'm like fucking. Like, <laughs> I've said a hundred times on the podcast, paranoid as shit. And I think so deep into everything. <laughs> I do the same thing, man. And that just uh, I don't even know what to say, man. It's just one of those things where when I smoke weed now, if I smoke too much of it, oh my god, it's just rabbit holes after rabbit holes after rabbit holes, and it's nowhere. You get nowhere. That's why your woodwork though, because you can yeah. stare at it. It just stare at everything. Like I should do this, and then I'll start drawing it, and then. I'll be like, mm, video game. I'm going to play a video game. <laughs> and I'll play a video game and then be like, mm, I should draw a piece of wood. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I try not to smoke too much, especially once I got my medical card. I thought, like, oh, I'm going to become a crazy pothead. And then I went in there and I was like, this is too much. This is heavy. <laughs> and then I saw all the people that were going in and out of the shop and they're fucking mutants. Like, oh, a yeah. lot of them are just mutants. What do you like, mean? Dude. Like people that I don't know where this community of people live, but they don't live on this planet because I've never seen anyone like a lot of them. And they come in through this shop and they look like, "What the fuck? You did you own a mirror? And can you look at yourself?" <laughs> well, Those are people would, that shouldn't be smoking weed though because they're not productive. Oh yeah, I saw one dude. He looked like an Oompa Loompa. That like, he was probably like five foot five, and he was trying to grow a beard. But dude, when you can't grow a beard. You just need to buy razors. But this thing was straggly. Like, it looked like dreadlocks were coming off of his fucking face. It was so nasty. And then he's wearing like these shorts, like these little stick legs. And he, <laughs> he sees me and he's like, hey, man, I really like your mustache. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And this guy, dude, it was great because he's like having this conversation with me. And you're just like, so what's your favorite weed, man? What's your favorite weed? And I'm like, I like the, the ones that get you high, man. And I'm trying to be cordial with him. But he he was talking my ear off for like... 15 20 minutes and i just wanted to pick up weed and leave and yeah so i try not to be like Isn't those weird when you meet people like that like they're fir- just the first word that comes out of your mouth like yeah you're weird you're <laughs> definitely weird just the tone of the voice everything like you're weird i wonder people. if he thinks the same thing about me though you're like, look at this fucking faggot <laughs> <laughs> keeps combing his mustache <laughs> <laughs> nervously twitching that stupid mustache I know what you're talking about, too, because I've been to several dispensaries, and, like, it is, like, half the people you see, they're, like, zombies just 
Walking mm. in, walking out, walking in, walking out. It's like, what is wrong with you? Right, and you don't want to be that person, so it's good. That was kind of an eye opener for me. It was like, dude, what if I go down that road and I become that mutant? I don't want to be that mutant. So, I still don't feel like that guy because I go there sober, high, whatever, and I've been kind of a pothead lately. <laughs> and you no know, fucking, I go in there, I bullshit, da, 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 and I'll have someone coming behind me, just kind of like point out like what they want and fucking get it and leave with hardly any words. And it's like, well, that's kind of lame. Like, I want to know what's going on here. Oh, you're you're getting like involved. After looking at the scene, how dispensaries operate, I was like, this is the life. I want this job. I want to open a dispensary. <laughs> Dude, you know how much money's in that, too? Yeah. Oh, gobs of money. Yeah, I don't understand, like, all right, so if the federal government comes in, even if you're doing things right, they can. I mean, you still get in a lot of trouble, right? I watched a documentary on Vice where, like, the guy was looking at, like, 10 to 15 years after he got his well, shop shut down. Because it's federally illegal. Yeah, so I'm saying, though, like, so all these guys can get raided at any time, right? Yeah. And, like, they're fucked? Yeah. Basically. Like, in Colorado... The federal government come in, bust a dispensary, and take everyone there to jail, and then the owners of the dispensary are going to be going to federal court. Why doesn't the federal government just do it all the time if they can? Well, well actually, what the DEA has been doing, from what I've read, is like, the, especially these people in California, I mean, I don't know how recently they've, if they've stopped doing it or what, but they'd go in, bust a dispensary, you know, in LA or wherever, and take all their weed, take all their money, and then pretty much the case never goes to court. And what was the whole fucking point of that, then? Jack them for their money. And for their weed. I'm telling you, these officials... Uh, those are the biggest it. gangsters, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I was just... I watched a documentary about the whole scam, the whole the war on drugs, and how it was just, just the biggest fucking scam in the entire world. Yeah, if and, we cut out this war on drugs shit, our, our society would be so much better. Right, but, like, this guy went and... Really, like, did his investigate investigate uh, investigative? Thank you. He did his work basically, <laughs> and he went down and looked at all of where the money was coming in, like how this was all happening. So basically, the government's like spending millions of dollars to prevent, you know, war on drugs, but at the same time, they were spending billions of dollars, and they're giving it to like fucking drug lords down south and helping them like move that operation. So it was just like this huge scam because there's so much money in it. Like Pablo Escobar, that dude made so much money. It's fucking crazy. Like, Have you watched that, that show, Narco? Yeah. Hell fucking yeah. Great. Oh, Narcos? Yeah. That was a badass show. The show's so good. The only thing I didn't like about it is you kind of like Pablo Escobar. You're not supposed to like the guy. For, fuck that. I love Pablo Escobar. I kept trying to remind myself that, like, you know, and then, of course, I just, they showed, you know, the bombing of the plane. Mm-hmm. I kept trying to remind myself of that until that episode. I was like, Jesus Christ, he murdered thousands of people. I oh, need to remember this. Tons of them. He tried to start a fucking war against America. <laughs> That's why I gotta love the dude. Like, he was so nutty, and he made so much money that he tried to start a fucking war. Him and his homies, we're gonna take out of a fucking America, eh? Yes. He's crazy, man. Like, yeah, he had some serious ambition. <laughs> he and tried he to make his own country. <laughs> in a country. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to be fair, his fucking jail setup was fucking gangster. Oh, yeah. yeah who the fuck? Yeah, I'm gonna build my own jail. <laughs> And then you can't. I'm gonna hire my, all my own guards. <laughs> and you cannot come in here. <laughs> yeah, you guys aren't allowed within two miles. I love how he tries to like, like, <laughs> like swing it to him too. He's like, "All right, I'm gonna go to jail. This, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> but I'm going to build it." <laughs> this is a big old party every day with his boys. <laughs> Didn't he have like the Argentine national or not Argentina, the Colombian uh, football team come in there and they like got to play football with them too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I fucking love jail. <laughs> the best part was is he had his wife and mom down the road. Like you guys aren't allowed to come. Not here. in the jail. <laughs> you guys stay down there because I got my hookers. My prostitutes coming. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. It's hard to take the the character in the, mo- in the movie seriously because Pablo Escobar was way shorter than that. He was like five five or some shit. Yeah. Well, he was way uglier too. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't a good looking man. Five five or f- he was he was a tiny guy. Maybe hey. That's why he was so ambitious. Didn't he, like, his mistress that he had was super hot. But when you have guns, like, you don't have to be a big, yeah. strong guy. If you have a gun and you're not afraid to use it, you're a pretty a badass dude. Well, that's just South America, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, everybody's just, they just fucking stab everybody down there. Well, who's that, who's the other guy, the new kingpin that just got out of jail because they tunneled him out? Oh, no, he tunneled himself out. Uh, oh, I don't think... Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. They did. They, he it was like a himself. million dollar tunnel. Yeah, out of the ju- out of the jail. But yeah, they already had the tunnel. Like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> had lights. Why do I think these people are cool? That's well, probably a problem. The, why is Sons of Anarchy a cool show to watch? That gang, that outlaw lifestyle is appealing. That that guy that got out of jail, 
I don't remember his name, but yeah, he's big in Mexico. Anyways, his Donald Trump made a statement like, "Yeah, we're gonna make it a con- something something about that guy." And then his son wrote like made an announcement to Donald Trump that like, "We're gonna kill you." So he Donald Trump called the FBI because he was um, he was scared of him his, his and his uh, family safety. And Trump Trump wants to be our president. Yeah. And he's scared. Yeah, he said he tried to act big and bold like, "Yeah, if I'm elected president, we're gonna." Yada 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 with that guy, and then his son fucking threatened him, and now Donald Trump called FBI and was like, "Hey, I'm worried about mine and my family's safety." <laughs> He's such a bitch. Hilarious. <laughs> Just funny. He probably gets, you know, hundreds of thousands of death threats, but that is one death threat that you legitimately have to take seriously. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they have the money and the reach to actually kill you. And he was just, oh man, and he probably was just so stupid, opening his mouth trying to get, you know, like some political advantage or something, and then. His first death threat, he gets scared. I'm when the election's over because listening to his, his speeches are so fucking funny. <laughs> they scare me. Why? So they never do because like you're just, like, cause he's, he's, isn't he still like really high in the polls, right? He'll never get elected. I ever. hope to God he doesn't. Because yeah. if he does, it's like World War Three. I mean, those polls are kind of bullshit, though. Yeah, they know they are. I don't, I don't, you guys actually watch the news? No. Yeah. What's the point? Not in a million years would he ever get elected, dude. There's no way. Yeah, I hope not. I think. In, have you seen Idiocracy? I think in a million years, in like you know, three hundred years, you get elected. Yeah. Welcome to Costco. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should bring that right now. That should be a greeting at every door. I love you. <laughs> yeah, when you show me Idiocracy, that that's fucking pretty spot on. Why why do we drink this? Because it's got electrolytes. Electrolytes. <laughs> have you seen that movie? Yeah. So well, I just quoted it, Ryan. What the fuck? I've seen it once. Well, you should watch it more because it's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen it a handful of times. <laughs> well, the first time I watched it, I was like, yeah, it's pretty funny. Then I started thinking about it after I got done. I was like, wait, I watched it again, and I was like, this is our future. This is exactly where our country's going. That's our, our world. It's got electrolytes. You had to go to Starbucks for hand jobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Do you, need, do you need anything, Jazz? I'm going to Starbucks. <laughs> Karma Fappuccino? Uh, but fuckers. No, come on, Carmel Fappuccino. Dude, I can't take your dog seriously right now. Why? Because he's fucking so big. You look, you, mean, you look tiny next to him. I feel like, I, like, like I'm getting punked right now. He's a big old softy. Look, he just loves to cuddle. He loves some loving. That's, yeah. You paid a couple grand for that dog, huh? No. I paid uh, like 450 <laughs> Cool thing about that, though, I thought I was getting this killer deal. I took him to the vet. That was $2,000. Wow. Next day. Because he had... Oh, man, it was sad. So the, the breeder that I went down to in Riverside, it was this, like, Mexican family that had a bunch of these Great Danes. By the Danes. way, we're talking about a Great Dane. Yeah. And um, they had a bunch of these Great Danes, and they were really skinny, and one of them had no eye, and it was a puppy. It was his brother. And they were trying to give me that one, and I'm like, no, I don't <laughs> fucking want the one-eyed monster. And then he was super skittish, too, but this guy, my boy Steve, he's like, right next to me almost immediately i almost felt like he was like please get me the fuck out of here <laughs> so when i took him to the vet they i had i didn't know how to like check a dog obviously they went into his ears and they found like 50 ticks in each ear and then he was like well malnourished and like he was dehydrated he's not in good shape so they they had to like iv him and then they had to pull all the ticks out of him a bunch of medication um and he was going to lose his eye that's why one of his eyes is discolored but then they fixed that too. But it was two thousand dollars later, and I was fucking pissed. I called the ASPCA on him. Was he scratching his ear? Yeah. Cause dude, my I I got a lap puppy, and my dog is doing that. She like she'll start crying like scratching her ear. <laughs> Could be yeast infection, cause that's what he deals with now. He has yeast infections all the time. In his ear? Yeah, in his ears, and his mouth, and even on his toes. What so I just rub some pepperation H on it. It takes care of it pretty good. Dude, I'm talking about vets. Only dogs are fucking expensive, dude. Yeah, dude, especially this guy. Oh, my God. Well, being a good dog owner is expensive. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, this dude eats a shit ton. And then he won't eat... Well, his favorite thing to do in the entire world, which is just fucking bums me out so hard, is he face fucks his food bowl to just throw all of his kibble all over the place. And this guy has range, man. He can really get into that bowl and flick it all over the place. Which is great to have with all of these stacks of wood that you can see, because then you get, you know, like... Sawdust all over it. Yeah, or fucking, just like a rodent will come in here and just have a field day, and I have to, like, set out traps. It's, it's all because of him. All because of this fucker. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't love me as much as I love him. I'm pretty sure he does. He just walked over to you and, like, standing up, just put his head on your lap. Yeah, he probably wanted to go outside. Oh. <laughs> Where's that? 
I'm not cleaning up after that dog. You know, yeah, you're a piece of shit. I didn't even see you walk out there with a bag. Do you pick up after your dog? I probably have a bag still with me. Oh, okay. Dude, you're so fast to call people out. <laughs> Dude, well, that, I was thinking, like, that's, that's a, a dickhead move with a great danger. You're just letting your dog take a man-sized no, shit. I couldn't get away with that. that. He takes shits the size of your head, right? I'm not <laughs> kidding. It's gnarly. But, ooh, he had diarrhea yesterday. <laughs> and he made sure that he dropped this fucking pile of just liquid bullshit right in front of the city. Like, that's a city building right there, right across the way, right in front of the entrance. And I can't fucking scoop up diarrhea shit with a bag. I mean, you can't necessarily run away. You live right across the street. Yeah, that's what I did. I was just like, oh, but there's cameras there, so I'm sure I'm going to get a complaint. Oh, so you- <laughs> no, I left it there. Yeah, no, I left it there. I you were going to go over there like you poured some water on or something. No, 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 no. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> 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 we'll just oh, wait for the man. ramifications. Do you ever come down to San Diego anymore? I think the last time I went down there was a year ago. I go watch a Charger game. No, the time you didn't you didn't call me? I did not call you. I'm <laughs> sorry. That was a wild weekend. Oh man. What'd you guys do? Uh we went down there on like a Friday night and we stayed in the gas lamp that weekend. And <laughs> it was like me and my four other guys and we just went like bar hopping and got fucked up. I ended up picking up one of these girls, and she came back to the hotel room. That was fucking interesting. We went back to the hotel room. One of my buddies was just hammered, right? And he was on a good one. And he was saying some of the funniest shit to so many people. And we get in this elevator. So there's five of us. And there's these two older black ladies that are in there, right? And my buddy, (laughs) buddy, as the door closes and we're going up, goes, Look at that girl's butt. It's going nowhere. And he's talking to the black girl right in front of him. And he's even doing this motion with his hand. <laughs> and one of the black guys is like, what the fuck? And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's about to go down. And then I was just like, sorry. Oh, shit. Sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was, it was fucking hilarious. I like a pass. That's what he kept telling girls as they were walking. I like, like, I like a pass. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to work. <laughs> hey, girl, how much you weigh? <laughs> It's like the worst when you're with your boys and like they think they're spitting game and their hammer's like, dude, please stop. You're embarrassing yourself. You're not good at talking. <coughs> Just stop. Why why do you guys think that cat calling works? I don't know. Everyone still does that though. It's really funny. Let him. It does work though with, with ghetto chicks. I'm gonna tell you that much right now. Or if you're in a Bugatti, you fucking cat call all day in that thing. Well, you watch those social experiments with the dudes in the like the rental mm, Ferrari. That's what, I was, that's what I was talking about. Chick would just jump right in Vitaly. Yeah. You watch that. Fucking that guy's such a dick. Yeah. Going to like they a boyfriend and a girlfriend and going up to the girlfriend and be like, "Hey, you want to get in my car?" Like you just ruined their relationship yeah. for a prank. Yeah, and she's these pranks, they, are but they do it. But it's nice though. Wait, but I think he just helped that guy out. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but it's a dumb guy though, because he stood. He he would stay, like they're standing there waiting for the girlfriend to come back. <laughs> so like it's one of those bitch ass guys that like he didn't ruin shit he just, <coughs> she just realized what a bitch he is because if Jazz got in the car would be like deuces and I would have left her there I'm never speaking to you again yeah done. Uh, well I wish he asked me to get in the car with him I would have you know blown him off a couple rounds if you let me drive it yeah I would, I would just like to ride in one you just want to ride in one what if what if he picked you up and was just like hey Ryan you want to go and ride with my, my Bugatti? I'm pretty sure we all know I do some gay shit. Would you suck his dick? To, to ride into what? What, what, are we, what? what are we talking about? Let's say a, a, a Civic. A Veyron. <laughs> Bugatti Veyron. Bugatti Veyron. Would you suck that dude's dick? I would lick the tip. you lick the tip. I would lick the for tip. For Bugatti Veyron. Yeah. Wait, to ride shotgun? Mm-hmm. So what are you going to do for you, like, just an Audi? Just, just a regular Audi? I won't do anything. What? I like jerk him off or something. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be nice about it. I, I, I watch those prank shows, dude, and I always wonder, like, I think that I can do it, but, like, in the moment, like, doing a prank, like, I, don't, I couldn't go through with some of the shit they do. I think I think a lot of them are just getting so out of hand, and they're not pranks anymore. Like, yeah, they're, like, trying to piss you off. Yeah, you're maliciously doing bad things, and then you're just like, oh, no, it's a prank. It's I'm a prank. not a good sport, like... With that kind of shit. If someone told me it's a prank, say, I don't care. Now I'm going to beat your ass. That's why I love pranks gone wrong. Those are the best. <laughs> no, no, no. You're talking about those idiots in Brooklyn or <sighs> New York. Those fucking like, those, oh, those three those Arabic st- kids. Stupid. Mo- those kids are They're, so dumb. Dude, these, you got to watch these videos. These guys are going to die. Like they'll go up and be like, like, like gangsters. They'll take gangsters' phone out of their hand. Like, I need to use your phone. 
Oh, I've and seen those videos. To, yeah, and they'll like pull out their gun on them and shit, and they're like, wait, 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 wait. They're <laughs> constantly the first, getting punched in the face. Like, because the first video I watched, the kid walked up, took the guy's. Uh, oh, that's what he did. He picked the guy's pants up. Oh, the gun fell out. And the gun fell out. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> and then he's instantly. <gasps> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a prank. It's a prank. Yeah. It's a prank. You're, you're so stupid. It's not a prank. Yeah, that's what's ridiculous. So you can't, the cops don't do anything about that. Well, what? You no, know, like some of these fucking pranks are like extreme. And law enforcement can't get involved, or like, they'll, or if, as long as they call like nine one one, like, hey, we're filming a prank, so if anyone calls in, it's not real. Like, that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah, and they won't get in trouble for it. Well, you're also supposed to have like a filming permit and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That's what I always thought. You're supposed to have permits and shit when you do that. I just know these guys should get in trouble for it. It's a little ridiculous. Yeah, there was. I mean, but if nobody brings it to the cops to say anything, then who's gonna get in trouble? It's not like the cops are sitting on YouTube looking for shit that's happening in their city. No, no, but a lot of times the cops will get called and then they let the crew go. I don't know. There's a lot of the, a lot of the videos are, that, like, are like that. Well, what color was the crew? They were white. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see black dudes in the hood doing that shit. They're going to jail. To be honest, the last prank videos I watched that I thoroughly enjoyed was the uh, the guys that did the shake weight prank. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And the uh, and they they had did a water ball and act like he was peeing. Pranking cops. Yeah, that that's was funny. that was hilarious. You gotta watch the one with magicians on cops. No, no way. Guy makes a weed disappear. Cops are at him. He's like yelling at him, and then he searches him. He's like, "Where's the weed?" He's like, "I didn't have weed." <laughs> I had weed. Cop had to let him go. There's another one where cops showed up. Guy was drinking a, a talk or a, a, a 24 ounce, 22 ounce a glass bottle, and um, so you can't drink here. He's like, "All right, I'll leave." So he's like, "You can't take." He's like, "Here, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll get rid of the bottle," and he, he squishes the bag, and he's like, "Where'd the bottle go?" He's like. I got rid of it. He's like, where did it go? He's like, you told me to get rid of it, so I got rid of it. And then the cop's like, pissed, right? So he's like, he's like, he calls for backup. But the cop, like, what do you call that? Like, there's nothing on me. So he goes to walk away. Then he pulls the bag, like, he like, makes the bottle re- appear, and he starts drinking it. As he's walking away, the cop's like, fuck. That's hilarious. That's awesome. I wish I knew magic just so I can do that. I would love to just fuck with some cops. I'm not a dick. I, I can't fuck with law enforcement. Why? Because their job's hard enough. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just not, I'm not, like, all these fucking kids online that are getting slammed, like, I think they deserve it. Like, I'm not, not, a majority, like, I mean, there, there's some that, that don't, but I would never resist a fucking cop. If a cop tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, for one, they have a fucking gun on them. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't get that either. The social experiments against cops, that's so stupid. Why would you do that? Like, I just don't get that. Where they're going around, like, to DUI checkpoints and, I mean, like, am I being detained? It's like, why did you go into the checkpoint then, douche? No, because in a way, it's violating your rights. Those checkpoints shouldn't exist. Yeah, Maybe true. That perspective that, like, thinks that you, like, what's the Border Patrol one we were talking about? Oh, the, the, you should YouTube DH, top DHS refusals. It's Department of, Department of Homeland Security. It's all the Border Patrol checkpoints. Mm. And it's people just hassling the Border Patrol because what they're doing is illegal. They're supposed to be on the border, not hundreds of miles inland. Yeah, why? they're, like, all the way up on the, on the 15 and the 5. Yeah, so that that's who that's who these people are protesting against. They don't they're not protesting about the border patrol at the border. They're they're protesting against the assholes that are fucking like this one guy. He has to drive through a border patrol checkpoint to get to work, to and from work every day. The people that work the checkpoint recognize him. They know who he is. <laughs> and they still they stop him every fucking time, ask him questions. <laughs> and so he got to the point where he's like, "Fuck you, people!" And so now he just sits there and will berate them for like fifteen minutes. Well, because just get a new that. job. Because he does that to them, they just wave him through now, but he makes it a point to stop and still yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> I got a new job. I don't even take the same route. I think it's, I think it's ridiculous to do that because you're, you're, you're talking to the, the guys at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, well, they make good money. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, of course. No, that I'm, I'm not arguing. But I'm saying what him doing that, what's it changing? Nothing. You're talking to people that are like they're not you know, high up in the chain. Yeah, I, like, I feel like if you're if you're complaining to a cop, a cop's not going to go up to a sergeant or whatever and be like, "I just would like to let you know that this the, this civilian was very upset with me, and I think I should be punished." Or you got these <laughs> dumbasses. There's a lot of these videos. They'll pull over a cop, and they're like, oh, it's citizen's arrest. Your headlight was out. I just watched that one recently, and he's lecturing the cop. You know, it's illegal to drive this vehicle with a headlight out. And he's like, he's like, I'm trying to go for a call. Like, you flagged me down. Like, can I help you or something? Uh, yes, the citizen's arrest. He's filming him. And the cop knows he can't do anything because the camera's out. Mm. And she's like, I just want that cop to just lay this kid out. And then, like, <laughs> the last view you see is of his head hitting the floor. The camera just, hit, like, angling at him when he's knocked down on the ground. <laughs> like, that's so ridiculous. Pull, I'm going to do a citizen's arrest. Like, you're fucking, like, leave the fucking cop alone. Jesus mm. Christ. 
Man, what can you do, man? It's a, it's a nutty world out there. I just like to, I just got to keep to yourself at these points. Especially as, as we're getting older. I don't know if you guys. I become more and more pussified as I get older. I just don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. I just think outside's scary. I'm just going to stay inside. I actually just don't want to. Uh, I don't want to go to jail, <laughs> you little bitch. <laughs> I had a dream that I went to jail just recently, uh, like on Thursday night, and it fucking freaked me out. Well, what did you do to go to jail? I don't even remember, but I was going to go to jail for two years, and I remember thinking like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go to Mexico. I can't go to jail at all. <laughs> yeah, you're too cute. I would rape the shit out of you if I was in jail. Have you seen that movie with uh, uh, Will Ferrell? Get Hard. Mm-mm. You got to watch it. I heard it was not worth watching. All right, it's a stupid movie, but it's just hilarious how Will Ferrell gets ready for. Like he learns how to sphincter things, like knives and shit <laughs> in his asshole, and that's that part's fucking hilarious. Sphinctering a knife in your asshole? That's <laughs> dangerous. A fucking a full on handgun. He's like, oh, I got like he's like pulling shit out of his ass. It's hilarious. <laughs> Will and Ferrell. Yeah, I was worried when that movie came out because like this is gonna be really good or really terrible, and then I heard nothing but bad things about it. You're the first person I've heard say anything good. I like Will Ferrell. I'm a fan of him. I'm a fan of him, but he's done a few terrible movies. He's allowed to though, because he's yeah. done some uh, awesome ones. It's just like Adam Sandler. <laughs> yeah, no, Adam Sandler has only done two good ones, and everything else has been pretty shitty. Yeah, I'm actually gonna say I I, I don't even, I, when a new Adam Sandler comes out, I'm like asking me shit. Yeah, yeah you got you got the Water Boy. Happy Gilmore. Oh, I forgot about Waterboy. Billy Madison. And Billy Madison. Madison. Yeah, that's three. That's it. Big Daddy. That's oh, pretty Daddy funny. Great. Two, four. One. So four. That's it. <laughs> he made so many movies. He, he's yeah. Like, he's been a fuck ton of movies. Grown Ups and Grown Ups Two. How was there a part two? Uh, uh, he sucks. I read this thing. He signed a, a contract with Netflix. He had to do like. 16 movies or something within a, a, like a couple years span. That's why he's just putting out all these garbage movies. I, I did hear something about that, too. Yeah. That's why all his movies are shit. Well, that's even lamer. Movies. Why, cool. why would you do that to yourself? Start getting money hungry, apparently. Yeah, I guess. What's new with you guys? Uh, Kids and kids. Yay. Are you you ever going to have kids? No, I don't think it works down there, man. Well, why don't you uh, get a vasectomy, then? I, I don't wear condoms. I thought the same thing for three years. And then? Then I had a kid. Because oh. yeah. I went three years with my ex-wife with no condoms, no birth control, no nothing. Mm -hmm. it's just blowing loads and then boom, had a kid. <laughs> same with me, dude. Same with me. You had a kid pretty early, though. Oh, I did it? I'm you were what? Jasmine, well, I guess. Yeah. All right. Right. Three, uh, yeah. All right. Never mind. All, All right. right. I'm not a good yeah. example. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I went like at least two years with no protection. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. 29. Yeah. All right. All right. You're telling me none of the chicks that you were with were on birth control or anything? No, a, a lot of them were, but there's been a lot that weren't. I don't. I, I've thought about like getting it tested. I guess I don't. I've hit my balls so many times that I feel like there's just damage that's been done. You know? Because I used to play hockey, and I didn't wear a cup when I would play hockey, which is really stupid. But I couldn't wear a cup because it would like limit my mobility, and I got whacked quite a bit in my balls, really, really hard. And I think that there's just some damage that's just it's not going to come back. I think it killed all my spermies. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I guarantee you can get a chick pregnant. Well, I'll try. Yeah, just keep trying. I'll keep trying. You want to have kids? Though, my, my, is my point. I do. I would, I would definitely like to have a couple kids. A couple. Yeah. You know, I didn't believe in only children until I had a kid. And now, <laughs> <laughs> now you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll never have an only child. Yeah. But I don't want two kids. <laughs> yeah, I would have. Yeah, I was. I had to have two kids. Yeah, I don't. I just. I don't want to have a. One kid that's just going to be that douchey. You know what I mean? Are you close to your sister? Yeah, not not really. I mean, I used to be really like a lot. She used to be like one of my best friends, but she lives in Alabama. And just the distance, obviously. She has four kids. She pops those fucking things out like left and right. So. Took right to Alabama. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. Four kids. So, she, so I, I hardly really get to talk to her. I'm going to see her for Christmas, but... Uh. Now that I have two kids, imagine having four kids just sounds fucking absurd. <sighs> I don't even know how they do it. I had literally no fucking clue. I can't stay over there. Like, they get mad at me because they're like, you never come on the holidays. And it's like, well, you have four fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> that is so hard. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. They just don't get it. Have you been around four fucking kids? 
full. Yeah. We, 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 there's four of us. Oh, God. It was loud as hell. Like, dude, when Jasmine's around all of us, she's like, you guys are so fucking loud. Can you just be quiet? Like, all we do is scream. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I don't envy your life. Dude, I remember my mom. My mom just would just yell. Like, as we were kids, she was constantly her yelling. <laughs> Hey, were your friends ever tripped out coming over to the house? Oh, yeah. Everyone, everyone dude, when they come over to our house, it was literally like a fucking zoo. They're like, hey, let's go outside. Dude, like, I can't fucking hear anything. Let's go outside. I need a break, man. We bring friends over from, like, their great family background. They come over to our house where we're all yelling at each other. It's like, are you, are you guys mad at each other? No, we're just talking. <laughs> right, I love you. I love you too, Jeremy. <laughs> That's the only way you get a word in, though. You had to yell. <laughs> ja- Jazz went on a road trip with, um, we went and picked up my uh, my sister from boot camp, and she was out in uh, Houston or? Uh, San Antonio. San Antonio, Texas. And the entire way, like, my mom just yells because me and Jeremy will start arguing, and she's like, stop, stop arguing, stop it. And then once my, my sister, my little sister, she's a shit talker and a half, dude. So once she got in the car, we're just going back and forth, and, like, we're really mean. Like, we're shit talking. My mom used to be really bad, too. <laughs> So Jasmine's like, she's sitting there, and this is when she was pregnant. She's like, I'm never going on a road trip with you guys again. She's like, all I want to do is go home and hug my mom. But like, dead serious, like, fucking crying. Like, you guys are so mean to each other. Like, you broke just... your girlfriend to the point to where she needed to hug her mother. Yeah, that's all she said. I, that's what you I family wanna, has done to I want to go poor... home and hug my mom. I was like, oh, my God. Poor Jasmine. Poor, poor Jasmine. I didn't even realize until we got back and he told me that. Because he's like, then I thought about it. I was like, we, it was 19 hours each way. So we fought. Oh. For 38 hours or whatever. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I slept a lot of it. I don't, I don't drive, dude. I hate driving. Oh, oh, in that 38 hours, he drove for maybe five. I'm yeah. a little bitch, dude. I, like, I, con- I, I constantly get out of driving. Why? Your girlfriend even drove more than you. She only drove like six. I, what were you guys driving in? A minivan. We rented a minivan for the trip. Oh. Dude, I just, I can't drive. Like, Why I, did I, you guys think that was going to be a good idea? I had fun. Did you? I had a great time. Yeah. You didn't do any driving. Yeah. Oh, and apparently in Texas, uh, you can't wear tank tops because you're considered a douchebag. Yeah, we learned that. Wait, too. what? You can't well, wear no, tank tops? San Antonio. San, well, but they, I'm going to go with all Texas because once I got back to California, I was like, guys, tank tops do look, they do look like douchebags. Yeah, I don't wear tank tops anymore. Uh, I mean, I'll wear a tank top if I'm going to the gym or if I'm, it's hot in here and I'm working, but I'm not going to go in public with it. But Well, check this out. So <laughs> I'm wearing a tank top. It's hot as fuck in Texas. And then this is when I used to work out, so I already looked douchey as it was. Mm. So... Jeremy and I, Jasmine's pregnant. She's like, I'm just going to stay in the room. I'm like, cool. Or Jane and I are going to go out. Like, we only had one night in Texas. So, first bar we go to, they're like, sorry, man. Uh, Got to have sleeves. I'm like, All right. These are just fucking bars. They're not like any classy bars. Go to the next bar. Sorry, man. Sleeves only. Like, I felt like I was like, I was like, <laughs> outcasted. Like, 60 years ago, I was black. I couldn't come into a bar. <laughs> so, I go to the next bar. Same thing. So, then I tell God, I'm like, All right. I'll buy a shirt. Remember, he like smiles. I'm like, how much is this shirt? 30 something bucks. But like, I feel like he was just trying to like. No, he raised the price to be a dick. Yeah. There was no way that shirt was 30 something bucks. Well, it was, I think it was like $35 or something. I was like, I'm not paying $35 for a fucking shirt that says your bar name on it. So we left in another bar, and the guy said the same thing. I was like, dude, can you please tell me like what he's like? Ah. I was like, dude, you're not going to offend me. He's like, uh. And that's what Jeremy's like. Honestly, dude, he's not going to get upset. He's like, well, in Texas, we consider guys that wear tank tops uh, douchebags. <laughs> I've like, been mobbing around Texas, one big old douche. He's like, yeah, pretty much. So we keep walking, then we get into a bar. It was an all-black bar. Remember that? It was like a ghetto-ass fucking yeah, club. Yeah, I remember it not being, not being comfortable. But at that point, I was hammered. So yeah. So you got you did get let into the all-black bar. <laughs> yeah. So it was like 60 years earlier. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't wear tank tops anymore. Well. That's I'm not that. true because he does, but I just remind him that he's a douchebag. I don't leave my house. <laughs> I don't leave my house. For, uh, Tank tops are incredibly comfortable, right? But it's true, though. It's either you're trying to show off your tattoos or you're trying to show off your muscles. And that's not... What if you're just inside wearing a tank top? Because I do that shit all the time. Yeah, I'll go to my... But I'm saying the majority of the people that are out there, like, they... With, like, full sleeves, they're doing it because they want people to see their tattoos or, like... Yeah, that, you know, it's definitely... Texas has got it right. It really is douchey. Yeah. But I'm still going to play devil's advocate because I still believe in the tank top. Oh, yeah, but we're still we're just more talking about being out in public. Yeah. Like, hanging out because, yeah, fucking. Uh, I still wear house. tank tops all the time around the house. That's everyday attire in Hawaii. Uh, like, everyday attire. Yeah. You wear board shorts and a tank top and flip flops. That's all you need. So. That's all I did when I was in San Diego. I always wore tank tops. Now I don't touch tank tops. <laughs> That's what sucks is because remember what we were just talking about? Like, how the marshmallow fight and, like, how that got shut down. 
Once something is, is good, all the douchebags come flocking to it, and then it becomes shit again. Yeah. And it sucks. It's like this revolving door of bullshit. It was weird, too, with the marshmallow fight. For anybody that doesn't know what that was, there used to be a marshmallow fight every 4th of July on one beach, in particular in San Diego, which got shut down. There's anyway. thousands and thousands, millions of marshmallows, actually, which go flying. Oh, in man. Yeah, it was great. Once the fireworks show ended, the mayhem. marshmallow fight started, and you just literally just hugged Fucking marshmallows at everybody mayhem. around you. Like you would, and we would be so, oh, man, this is why I love you so much, Ryan. <laughs> when you had that handful, your very first handful, and, and I was like, what do you do? You're just like, do you just throw marshmallows? He's like, yeah, watch me. First thing he does is he turns around and goes to the closest person and fucking shotgun blast it was like a lady too and just like what as hard as he can and at this point you were like buff as hell and you had an arm on you kid and you like fucking just nailed this lady so hard and then just starts taking off running and you just, that's that was your only principle was i want to get as close to their face as possible and chuck it at them well after towards the end i started being a douchebag because i had the little marshmallows and i would dip them in the water a little bit so they were like it's sticky, sticky. <laughs> I remember Kevin was so mad at me. We were like, if I wasn't by the water, I had the big one. I'd just put it in my mouth real fast. <laughs> <laughs> just chuck it like. <laughs> the first year I took him down to the beach, we're sitting there hucking marshmallows at people. And I look over and he's all, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of your mouth. <laughs> oh, I always have to take things to the extreme because I'm like such a poor sport. <laughs> I always like, even, like, there's no winner for a marshmallow fight, but I have to be like the guy like. He got me pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> he got me pretty good. I, want to just, I just want to be remembered. <laughs> this is the best marshmallow thrower ever. See, like, hitting random people was never enough for me. So, like, as the fire sh- fireworks show was going on, I would sneak away from our group. <laughs> and so by the time it ended, I had them in my sights. So, so you're going to blast shit. them? Yeah, snipe shit on my friends. It's the yeah. best way to do it. I don't want to hit some random people. I want to hit somebody no, that's remember. No, that's what I thought was hilarious because... He's just running around like a lot of the a lot of our group was so nice and cordial. Most of the people were all nice and cordial out there. They weren't maliciously trying to hurt you with marshmallows. Only person out there trying to do that was me and Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and even if you do blast someone in the face with a marshmallow, bad doesn't really hurt. <laughs> well, I got remember uh, we were just talking about it when I was walking up the street back up to your place, oh, yeah. and a guy was waiting for me. Some <laughs> fucking creep was waiting for me, blast me in the face, and I remember being like, I, that kind of sucked. But when you, I've got hit with a big one in the eye, dude, that shit that's sucks. That's what it was. It was a big one and it hit me like right below the eye. And I was like, that sucked. But we got him good. <laughs> we, and you, we got him so good. And then he called us boys and we had a big marshmallow fight with them. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how I blast him right off the bat after he gets me. And you come running around the back like some savage and <laughs> just <laughs> blast the back of his neck and head. <laughs> dude, every, it's so hard to make a memory every time you're down at San Diego because we we're always so hammered. Yeah. This is true. And that was like that was when I used to drink every time a fucking alcohol hit my lips, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get shit faced. <laughs> yeah, that's you know what's funny? There was there was a, a big shift at one point in my life where I used to be that way. It was like yeah. when I'm taking this drink, we're going to one place and one place only. Yeah. Blackout city, let's go. And as I've gotten older it's like we're going one place and one place only. Probably buzz in bed because bed sounds <laughs> really good right now. <laughs> yeah, dude, I can't tell. Last time I got like shit faced hammered. <sighs> Friday. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I got, I got <sighs> my friend, my neighbor too. She has this killer job where she's like a, a rep for all of these brands of, of hard liquor, like Kettle One, Crown, all that shit. So, what her, her job is literally go to the bar and spend money at the bar buying people drinks. To promote, but like, if you're gonna order a Moscow Mule, it has to be made with Kettle One. Oh, fucking great! Even better. <laughs> so that's that's her job. So we just go bar hopping all the time, and she pays for everything, like all of it. So she's getting paid for doing this. Oh, she gets paid really well to do this too. It's pretty rad. She's that's good. A job I should have had before I lost my pancreas. I, you know what? This has got to be one of the most dangerous jobs ever. I, I don't know how she. Stories like this because it's like, God, where the fuck do you find a job like that? I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Maybe so that's like a lottery thing that she might have won because she got it from, she was working another job. Her employee, or not employee, whatever, um, he left the company to go work for this company and then recruited her kind of thing. So it's just one of those things. But we got shit face. And I think there's this new alcohol that's out. It's called Cannon Blast. It's a Captain Morgan. It tastes fucking awful. It's the worst thing in the world. But I got really drunk. And she spice rum? No, dude. Ugh. 
Uh, I can probably go get some if you want some. No. It's so gross, dude. It tastes like... I'm on a motorcycle back home, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it just tastes like shit. I just can't describe it to you. It tastes something like uh, unicorn shit. That's what it tastes like. <laughs> it's like a fruity, lame thing going on on your palate. Those are the worst kind of drugs, the sweet drinks. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. But in any case... She made, there was karaoke going on this night, and it was for a memorial for off, for an officer who was killed in the line of duty. And we were there, and she yeah, said... Died in a DUI crash? I, I think so. It was in Corona? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Um, I love how I said Corona. Thanks, man. So, yeah, so I got bet to do uh, karaoke, Wrecking Ball, you know, little, you know Wrecking Ball. Such as Carson? No. What's that? Oh, the, Miley uh, Cyrus. That's Miley Cyrus? Yeah. Oh. I came in like a wrecking ball. That one? I've heard the song. So I just had to change up the lyrics to I came in like a cannon blast. They're only $5 at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you sung the song? That's how I sung the song. <laughs> but I only did it because she got me a shot of Blue Label. And let me tell you what happened after a shot of Blue Label. I was gone. I don't know what Blue what Label is. It's, it's only like a $200 bottle of whiskey. Her job is tight. I'm telling you, it's fucking awesome. I just actually recent, recently went for a job interview with a brewing company, and uh, I was really hoping to get it. And it didn't work out. <laughs> wait, wait, was it a like a brewery? No, it was a, a actual beer company. It was right. like a private company for Budweiser. Oh, but yeah, it didn't work out. Well, you you guys are like in the mecca of breweries. Yeah, it's There's so many insane. fucking breweries in San Diego. Why don't you try getting a job with one of them? I don't want to work for a brewery. I want something that has like a good fucking 401k. You are brand. such a dad. What? You are such a dad. Oh, no. You're thinking of the future. Who does that? Once you have a kid? Oh, if I didn't have, yeah. a, if I didn't have a kid, I'd be a wreck right now. Yeah. We'd probably hang out a lot more, too. <laughs> yeah, definitely hang out more. <laughs> Which is always, every time we hang out, is... You've seen a couple of them. This is a different way to hang out, though, because you guys actually get to do this more soberly. Yeah, it's not as fun. Yeah, this, this is super <laughs> lame. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I just say that because I can't drink anymore. So yeah. fuck you guys. Well, I just recently saw I got I was looking through old pictures and you had a beer in your hand, and it was like super <laughs> fucking weird to see because I haven't seen him with a beer in so long. Yeah, it's always been a year, and like he was all fucking shit faced. Your eyes were all done over, and I was like, whoa, that's fucking weird. It's almost been a year. It's been hard. Uh, the first few months were terrible. Mm -hmm. um, I finally, a couple months ago, still got to the point where I just didn't really notice that I wasn't drinking anymore. Periodically, like... Uh, you still need something to drink, though. I know yeah. There's always a drink in your uh, hand. Like uh, what, Charlie and Haley's engagement party. Fucking, you know, go there. You know, everybody's drinking. Fucking, I feel socially awkward. Drinking was my crutch. Mm -hmm. And so, boom, I drank like four or five cups of soda. Because <laughs> I just had to have something in my hand to drink. Forrest Gumpin' it? It's funny because when it gets like that, it's almost like your mentality is like, if I get super high, then I'll come out of my show. But then it gets super big. Like, really <laughs> what ends up happening is I just get super high. <laughs> I don't have any of the anxiety, though. I just don't talk. Yeah. Instead of having that social anxiety, that goes away. Like really? I think, see, with me, that's why I'm not, I'm not a good stoner. When I smoke, I get super fucking paranoid, and then I, I start analyzing every mm -hmm. single thing. It's like, really funny when he, when he like feels he has to talk because he'll bring up all these random <laughs> subjects and like... Do you guys think space was created with love? No, that's what you were talking about earlier like, when I embarrass myself because I will just do anything to keep the conversation going. So I'll tell like a humiliating story that I regret just because I'm like, oh, it'll like buy like five minutes of non-silence. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand the silence. Uh. I'm the worst because he has no problem being quiet. So we're in the car and I'm like, so I keep going. He's like, dude, do you ever stop talking? I'm like, no. <laughs> when we get out of the car, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Yeah, me and you are, are pretty similar in that regard. I say stupid shit all the time. All the fucking time. My jokes are so lame. I, what's funny is I have no shame. So, like, when I'm sitting there, like, roasting somebody, and everyone constantly is like, God, man, you're such a dick, yada, yada. Like, wh why, why am I being roasted? I'm like, you can roast me. You can ask me. Literally, you can ask me anything, and I will, I'm an open book. Hmm. Really? Yeah, go ahead. Remember that one time when uh, you thought that you were going down on a girl and that she was menstruating? But you had a bloody nose. God damn it. <laughs> Did you tell him to bring this? Up? No. 
Uh, well, this is what you fucking get. You can't just come over to my house in the morning and be like, hey, I heard you nope. slept with this chick. No, 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 this is so a little birdie told me you've been sleeping with this chick. No, no, it's no, like, no. whoa, whoa. This podcast, this is probably like the tenth time. That's no, why I'm saying this. This will be the fifth time that it's been brought up. <laughs> and I, I didn't even listen to your previous podcast oh, yeah, yeah. to know that. Everyone knows the story well. well, it was, well it, was, it was within the first five episodes. That the second one, it was brought up. Because in, in, I remember I was telling them I had blood all over my face. <laughs> and my it was like, why did you have blood on your forehead? <laughs> How did you have blood on your forehead? It was like, some special sense. technique. Like, well, let me know. <laughs> oh, my. And it was a bloody nose. Yes, it was. It's not even an embarrassing story. That's it's crap. not embarrassing, but it's still a good one. Yeah, I just yeah. remember you told us at the dinner table, and it was just me, <laughs> you, me, me you, Jasmine, and my ex. <laughs> it was just like the most awkward thing in the world. It's like, yeah, I fucking love that man. Because <laughs> well, Eric was super, uh, super quiet. So when I told that story, she's like, I don't know what to say right now. That's really and, and weird. And again, I'm going to bring this back up. The fact that when you when when we went down there and we were going to go visit you guys, and you grabbed her and caressed her butt which was a great butt and you just cut both both cheeks and lifted up <laughs> stared right into my eyes and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> and then for her not to say a fucking word about it afterwards I was just like god what a fucking bitch <laughs> cause I'm that happy go lucky retarded uh, he's, he's just special you don't have to worry about him <laughs> yeah. your girlfriend's yeah, right. right next to you while you're doing it yes yeah. <laughs> I know what... and then later that night when we were in the hot tub once again it's me Jasmine my ex and these three <laughs> foreign girls he's trying to get a group sex action going on and he's so dead set on it he's like dude i think we could fuck all of them <laughs> uh, and he's not he's not shy about it. this is what no. this is one of my favorite things about him he's so not shy about it it's like right in your face it's aggressive i'm gonna fuck all of you <laughs> i've gotten better over the years like from jasmine yelling at me <laughs> But I say I've got it better than like they'll be like, no, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not buying that bullshit. <clears throat> I think I've got it better because I, I have calmed. I think I've, I've calmed down a lot, especially with like my my kids. Because I keep like anytime I do something really stupid, I'm like, that's not really like something an adult would do. Mm. And I I want to I want to be an adult, but I, it's like Jeremy brought up a good point. Like he was like, like do you feel like a man? And I was like, like he was like no, actually I don't. He's like because I don't feel like he's like I know I, I do manly shit. He's like but I don't feel like a man. Why don't you feel like a man? What? Why don't you feel like a man? Because I'm, a, I feel like a child. I feel like a kid that wants to just go have fun and break shit. Mm, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, like I, I, I don't feel like, like a grown up. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I feel like a man, but I'm saying like I don't feel. Yeah, I don't feel like a grown up man. Like a grown up. Yeah, like. So I, I started thinking really in depth in that. I asked my dad, and he was like, "No, I don't feel like a grown up at all." <laughs> and, I, and I was like, "He's like, son. He's like, do you ever look at these adults at the rivers with these big ass giant fucking mm-hmm. boats that have like." Fucking 600 horsepower. He's like, that's just a kid that has money now. Yeah. It's really uh, straight up. I don't think I've I've grown up either. I just buy new, like, better toys. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, though. I was, I'm so good at breaking shit. Uh, everything. Even, like, commitments. I'm just awesome at breaking everything. Woodworking is, like, perfect for that. Oh, it's amazing because I can break the shit out of things. And you, it's, like, a good thing sometimes, you know? Like... And if you're like putting something together and you don't like it, you can take your frustration out on it, and it feels so good. Oh, so good! I wouldn't want to destroy all this expensive ass wood, though. Yeah, well, that's the best part. You can redo it. You know what I mean? It's not like you're blowing it up. You're just you know taking out some pent up aggression towards it and then <laughs> and just gluing it, it, so it back nice. up. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yep. Yeah, I've always been like that though. I don't ever have shame. I. I used, to, I used to think that I had a lot of regret, but then now it's just like, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> like what? What's some, what? Like, what's one of your regrets? <laughs> like, bad regrets that I don't want. Like, that kind of stuff. Oh, we get troll. I can't. Oh, I want, I want the bad ones. I'll I want tell the, you the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> when we turn this off, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Modecast, be right back. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I don't, yeah, I don't have any shame with any of my stories. Really? Oh, my life is filled with shame. I have weird regrets, almost, because I got to the point where it's like I... It's taken me a long time to get to that point where it's like, oh, that was actually that story was actually funny. It's not a bad story. It's... I, don't, I can... But to have the confidence that he has to say what he says is much different. <laughs> I don't know if it's confidence or just... Stupidity? <laughs> Straight stupidity. You're coming at, coming at you hard. I'm pretty dumb. I'm definitely pretty dumb. <laughs> I've heard you say some of the most rugged shit to people to where I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Jasmine, but um, people, people, I think, 
a lot of times, because especially when we would like go out, and you, once again, you have zero shame whatsoever. You can fucking say anything to anybody. And people, I think, get really afraid of you because they think that you're being super aggressive and being a bully. Yeah. Especially yeah, when you're all... that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because, especially when you're buff. Because I would watch you be like, this guy's a fucking asshole. And they wouldn't do anything about it. It's like, because you're afraid of him. But I see the back end of it. It was like, no, that's just mode being mode. He's not, be, he's not being a dick. He's just being himself. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, like, like with Haley... She's like, you pick on people. I'm like, I don't pick on people. You totally, totally do. You totally but I don't mean, I, dude, because I grew up with an older brother, dude. So that's like my only, like, after, like, I'm like, I have the little brother syndrome all the time with my friends, though. And I feel mm-hmm. the need to, like, sit there and pick, pick. I get a rise at you and, like, keep pick, pick, pick. <laughs> like with Jasmine, dude. Like, Jeremy will tell me all the time, he's like, dude, stop. Like, just fucking stop. <laughs> I, if, I, if I know I start getting a rise at you, I have to keep going. It's like a little kid inside of me. And you don't turn it off either. It just yeah. keeps riding until. So I love it, though. I feel like I've gotten better. Dude, as an, as, an older, as an older brother, like he's like the worst one, to ha- little brother to have because mm. he would never give in or give up. And he's way bigger. So well, he, he was never bigger than me until he got came eighteen. Really? No, I was bigger than you in high school. When you left for the army, he was a big boy in high school. I don't remember. When I was when, when he left for the army, I, I started working out because I was like, oh, I can't wait till he gets back to boot camp. I'm gonna beat his ass. <laughs> and then like I remember, I would try when he got back from boot camp. I was like, I like try to get him to wrestle. He's like, I'm not gonna fucking wrestle you, dude. Like, what the fuck's the matter with you? <laughs> God, you now, I've been working out all fucking ever since you left. I've been dude, working out to left, wrestle you. Dude, I was like working out like crazy. I can't wait. I'm like, it was like that. Uh, have you seen that movie um, with Adam Sandberg? He's a superhero or not superhero? He's like a stunt man. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, he like wants to fight his dad. Hot Rod. Yeah, that was me. Like I was like preparing. Like, <laughs> just, I'm just training so I can beat up my brother. Everybody has no idea. He like missed me when he got back, and I'm like, "What's up, <laughs> dude? I miss you so much. You'd have no idea what I've been through. So cold, <laughs> dude. This fucker refused to write me while I was gone. <laughs> yeah. I asked him to write me a letter. He refused. I felt bad. He 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 said for every letter you send me, I'll pay you five dollars. I felt really guilty. You yeah. did that. You could have turned a profit. Yeah, I think I think it was just easier pretending he wasn't gone. I've always been super close to my brother. Yeah. So I just pretend like he wasn't gone. Yeah. Well, that's got to be hard, too. Yeah. Fuck, when he was in Iraq, that, he, he didn't talk to us for like six months because he, he stopped calling home because it was easier. Yeah, that homesickness got bad, so I just stopped talking to home. Yeah, but wasn't it like, did even when you went on and deployed out, did you even have access to, to communication? Yeah, we had internet and phones. Like you, um, We had like a phone center. And mm-hmm. then, like, an internet center, and it was all in a tent. I feel like it would just be packed all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, when it was daytime here was when there was the longest lines. Mm-hmm. So when I did call home, I'd call home when it was, like, 3 in the morning here. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Total no, dick. I could walk right in with no line. Because <laughs> otherwise, you'd be waiting there. That, and there was time limit. When there was a line, you had a time limit of 20 minutes on the phone. Mm-hmm. And so when your 20 minutes is up, fucking boom, you'd go back in the line. Well, when I would call home, when there was no line, I could sit there as long as I wanted on the phone. So you would you just get a phone call at 3 or 4 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, I would have like, never talked to you either then. <laughs> at, at the time, I didn't know he was, like, you know, getting drunk and doing drugs out there. And I was thinking back to a time when you, we, we uh, video chatted, and Jeremy put his hand, like, he's like, hey, I'm going to show you something. I look like he was showing us his ass. But it was with his hands. <laughs> he took his hands away. He thought it was like the funniest thing. I remember I was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> like, remember, he still thinks it's funny. Look at him. He's doing it right now. <laughs> but I remember But I remember now it's like, oh, it's because you were fucking hammered. <laughs> I, I think it's funny. <laughs> Not as funny as he thought it was because he was like Dude, dying. We had no entertainment. Yeah. We worked seven days a week for like 12 hours a day. Yeah, hammered. <laughs> Pass the time somehow. Wait, did, you, did you actually go out like <laughs> into the streets of Iraq and drunk as shit? <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I wasn't infantry or anything, so I spent most of my time on our little base. Uh. The only escape I had was an infantry buddy of mine. I'd go out and patrol with him, mm-hmm. which I was just a driver because, well, I didn't do what you were supposed to do with training and actually learn how to like <laughs> be <laughs> a soldier. <laughs> I'm afraid to go. I never figured that one out. <laughs> well, he, well, he was gun. supply, so he was basically... He yeah, just, like whenever my unit went for, out for training, I didn't go. I just, my supply shit. I didn't, I didn't I just wouldn't go to the training thing. <laughs> Actually, no, like, I, I just had no time to be out there in the field. I had so much paperwork and shit to do and the, that, that my command was like, yeah, you guys need to stay back. Which was cool because I was like, I don't have to go sleep out in the dirt. Sweet. He was the only guy that I ever knew that fucking would call out from the army. He was like super good buddies with a sergeant. <laughs> so, and like I remember hearing him like, yeah, uh, I can't come in today. It's like, you're in the army. You, call yeah, out from you, the army? you like, can't make that choice. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, would, he would call out, though. I was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? 
I don't even know how that's how it's. How you I did it. my job really well, but as a soldier, not a good soldier. <laughs> Isn't that much? when you're an army, like everyone's a soldier, right? What'd you basically? Like, or is that marine? Like, like, like you worked at a store, but it was with a store full of guns. Well, no, that's the way I look at your job. I was my job was unit supply specialist. So anything my unit needed supply wise, we took care of, and we also ran the books. So anything, any real property we had, like vehicles or weapons, you know, expensive shit, you had to account for. And so we handled all that paperwork for all that. And a part of the job was the arms room. And that's you know pretty much like a big giant safe where we keep all the weapons, and you have a person that's in charge of that. So for a while, I, I was doing that. I was in charge of all the weapons, oh which was God. by far my favorite job because yeah. all I did was work on weapons all day. It was great. I loved working on them. Could you ever just like take some of them with you and just go fuck around with them? Yeah, you go to jail for that shit. Ugh, that's I would so be in jail then. That and um, well. M16s, for me, like an AR-15 or an M16 or M4, or whatever you want to fucking call it, is not very fun to shoot. What I is? shot them so much that I just don't care about them. What about, like, you know if you just like, pull out like a, you know, like a RPG or something like that? So rocket launchers, they cost about $6,000 a piece. Hey, it's, not your, it's not coming out of your dime. Well, that, you're not even allowed to die. I, I wasn't allowed to have them. Like, we, I didn't see a rocket, I, I saw a rocket launcher in basic training and Iraq. <laughs> 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 there was no in between. <laughs> oh god, that was so much fun to shoot one. Like to shoot one at a oh. car. That would, suck. <laughs> that would suck though if you missed. It's like, oh dude, I didn't know the seven thousand dollars will pass. I didn't know. One. <laughs> See, it's a good thing we weren't in the army because, if, especially if we were together, <laughs> that would, we would do that. Hey, can't you do that? Can't you do like a buddy system? Yeah, like literally, you can join with a friend, and you, you'll be with that friend for the entire duration. Ryan, I'm not career. going into the military. I will with not, you. Go to the military. <laughs> not going to the military. Hey, this is how dumb we were. I remember me and uh, me and Drew at the time. We went. Uh, Andy brought us on his his navy base, and we're like looking through the, in the ships, and he's like, "Hey, we were hammered. I don't even know. We, I drove on base, shit faced, and it was really bad. And we're waiting for Andy to get off the boat, and we're like, dude." Why don't we be like Navy SEALs? Like, like it's going to be easy to do. He's like, we should totally be Navy SEALs. We're talking about, like, we're making out this drunken plan. And he's like, like, we're not, like, be one of these fucking, like, seamen, though. Like, that's fucking lame, being on the boat. Like, we're going to be, like, doing dope-ass missions. So then, like, I remember I got home. I started researching. I was like, be a Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> you found out what Navy SEALs is all about? <laughs> yeah. Screw that. Dude, that's a gnarly-ass training. I have a buddy who's a SEAL, and he's fucking cr- Cuckoo, I think every, every SEAL I've, Dude. Ever, I've met, or Cuckoo, he had a neighbor that was a SEAL, nuts. Nutcase, but he was completely normal when he went in. He was completely fine. And then when he became a SEAL, that's... Well, I was talking to my old neighbor. God. My old neighbor, he would talk about things when he got drunk, but it was so hard to get information from him. Like, I would try all the time, and mm-hmm. he'd be so vague. It was like, oh, just tell me more. Well, See, dude, you know me, I'm relentless. So I remember Katie would tell me all the time, his ex-wife, she'd be like, can you stop asking him questions? I would try to get something out of him. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, super, like, mellow. And I remember, um, one time he had two black guys. I was like, what happened? He's like, I got in a bar fight. And I was like, damn, like, won't you get a lot of trouble if you get caught? He's like, I won't get caught. And I was like, I know, but let's say you did get caught. He's like, no, like, I won't get caught. <laughs> and, like, and then, you know, me, I have to keep going. So I was like, no, dude, but, like, let's say you got caught. Like, what would happen? He's like, you don't understand. I won't get caught. And I'm like, dude, but, like, come on. Like, what if? So, like, He's like, just, just humor me. It's not going to happen. I won't get caught. I don't, I don't know if he meant, like, his training will make him escape or that, like, like he can't control because he's a SEAL. I, 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 both. I think, it, yeah, both. Because, like, you, if... You do some serious shit and you're a Celia. You can you can go to jail really easily for things. But I mean, you can do a bar fight. Your command's gonna cover your ass. Mm-hmm. Um, but I used to try to ask him about Seer School or any other training. You know what Seer School is? No. It's a S E R E, and it stands for Survival, Evasion, Resistance, Escape. That sounds awesome. So it's basically oh. two weeks where they put you in a situation where you're supposed to survive. Bear girl style. You're supposed to evade capture. And then, then the whole point of the thing is for you to get captured. And then once you're captured, you're supposed to resist, um, you know, any interrogation. Mm-hmm. And then you're supposed to be able to escape capture. But they, they torture you, though, right, when you're there? They legit, they, you go on a mission that you have to complete. You get caught, and you're legitimately tortured <laughs> for a few days. What? And then you have to escape Fuck from that. this place. Fuck that. I'll tell you everything you want to know. <laughs> you're right. you're right. As soon as I get caught. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> no, like, he, the... The, the description he gave me of it is like, ah, you know, you they take you, they beat the shit out of you for a while, and then you go back home. And I'm like, well, but 
Like, doesn't it suck? He's like, yeah, it sucks. It's whatever. I'm like, that, that's, that's not what I expected to hear. Like, <laughs> it sounds fucking terrible. <laughs> Have you just... seen G.I. Jane? Mm-mm. Like, apparently, like, like, what they showed in that movie was fairly accurate for SEAL training. I mean, I can't, I, I don't have any verification. I just heard that it was fairly accurate. And they actually show Sears School, part of Sears School in that movie. Have you seen this shit on the History Channel? A little bit, not really. I don't watch regular TV. Dude, it's nuts. So, like, they get him to the point, I'll, 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 you're throwing up during training. Hmm. And he's and he's sitting there throwing up, trying to complete the mission. And he's like, cover your fucking tracks. So the guy's going back over, his throw up with dirt. That's like, awesome. Trying to cover the throw up. And then, like, he's throwing up a game, so he's got to go back and, like, cover it with dirt. I'm like, oh, my God. That's so rugged. Have you ever have you ever thrown up from overexhaustion or just like... Yeah, leg workouts. Leg work? You've thrown up? Yeah. Like, thrown at up. the gym? Yeah. Yeah. I've thrown up a few times. Yeah. And not on my own. I'm a little bitch on leg days. But, like, when I, I worked out with a trainer and uh, he came my buddy and I would throw up. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't do legs, obviously. I used to throw up uh, running in the army. Yeah. But that was... Over, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I, I I used to, when I, like I was in. You try to say you were a good soldier, and then it's like you know, no, because I knew. It sounds like all. When it came to my really job, bad. everything was legit. But as a soldier, I wasn't a good soldier. That doesn't mean shit. Because you don't understand how the fucking military works. Do you? He did. I he he could take the military <laughs> off. You told the military, "I'm going to take the day off." <laughs> Dude, I once I, when I was in the fire academy, we had to wear um, whatever. Wait, real fast. Sorry, whatever happened with that? We were talking about that recently. I mean, Jay and I <clears throat> um, went to the fire academy. We did did all of it, and then completely honest with you, as soon as I got to the point to where I was like finished, like I was ready to go get my job, I didn't want to do it anymore for a lot of reasons. One of them, the main one, was like I didn't like being told what to do, and I didn't like working for somebody. And not working for myself. Like, I felt like I was selling myself short if I did that. Because the money's great and everything. And the pension's what's even better. Another reason behind it was like, dude, fucking douchebags, man. A lot of them are so fucking douchey and lame. And they're really hard. Like, it was just hard for me to work in that environment to where I didn't want to punch them in the face like all the time. And, yeah, it's just, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So when I did my academy, I actually was like one of the top guys in the academy. And even when I got out of the academy, there was uh, an opening that was, I think it was uh, Crest Force. Could you grab me one? Thank you. Um, I think it was like Crest Force or something like that. They were hiring like some, some positions, and I actually was one of the only candidates from our academy that applied where I, I got an interview. So I felt like that was probably something I... What could have done probably could have gone up there. And then right at the same time, I was like, I was just dealing with so many issues of like, do you want to do this for the rest of your life? You know, because like it's one of those things. And I was like, no, I really fucking don't. Like I worked my ass off to get to this point, but I don't want to do this anymore. Like I don't want to, I don't want to work for someone else. I want to, I want to be able to work for myself, make my own money and be on my own time, my own clock, my own everything. So... <laughs> That's why it didn't work out. But when I was in the fire academy, we had this this hill that we had to run up. I think it was like six miles up, right? And it's up in the hills. And I had to run it one day with with like my mask over me. And basically that mask is like hooked up to oxygen and you know it's positive pressure so you can breathe when you're in, you know, like a, a burn or something like that. But they're making us run up this hill in that, and it's just this section of this hill. And <laughs> I even told the instructor, I was like, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel so weak today. Like, I think I was like getting a cold and she was like, I don't give a shit. Get your ass up there. So I get halfway up it and I threw up in my mask. Oh, oh dude, that was so gnarly. Oh, what was the mask you were wearing? It's, I was wearing a Draeger, but, um, basically it's a full, it's a full face mask, right? There's a thing of like a scuba, it's like a scuba oh, gear. Oh, the hose coming? No, this one, this one actually had like a respirator that connected almost to where your mouth is. Mm-hmm. So you look, you look like a fucking badass when you had these things on. Um, but so, and I didn't have air. I didn't have it hooked up to the air. We weren't running with bottles. We were just running with masks. And it's hard to, to breathe in that mask because it's sucked to your face, right? And it's, its whole principle is to not let any outside air in. So you have to breathe through this tiny little fucking hole, and it's miserable. And <laughs> I had to throw up, and I, I knew I did, and I was trying to get it off, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. You have to do it over the back of your shroud and everything. 
So I just start throwing up, and it's coming out this little hole. Oh, God. <laughs> the worst, worst about it is now I'm like this in this aquarium of my own vomit, and <laughs> I just like can't breathe because I'm trying to like obviously still breathe, and I'm sucking up my own vomit in, into my nose. Dude, it was so gross. I took off my my mask, and it was like, oh, dude, oh, down my neck, in my hair, in my fucking eardrums. It was gross, dude. So you, but you completed all the school and you're ready to go and get your job. Yeah, the only thing I didn't do was paramedic. I didn't want to be a paramedic. I wanted to be an EMT firefighter. Those dudes have the best jobs. Those are. I wanted to be a truckie, which basically those are the big trucks with like you see the big ladder trucks and they have a tiller in the back. You probably see them. It's not the engines. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. But I wanted to be a truckie because they do like extrications. They're the guys who go on top of the roofs with saws to cut ventilation. They they do all of the the really manly burly heavy equipment kind of shit and i just, i love that stuff um so i had gotten to the, all that portion of what i wanted to do it was done and it was literally just i just had to apply and i just didn't want to do it anymore still it's still to this day like i wonder if like did i fuck up should i should i have applied but no like at this point especially with what's going on here i don't feel that way at all like i feel like i would have sold myself short i would have just Wanted to be that guy who just collected a check, probably would have got a big lifted truck and, you know, like a, a boat and gone to Havasu all the time. But that's not me. Like, it's never been me, and I don't want to. I want to collect a check. I don't know about the boat and Havasu and everything, but I want to I want to collect a check. Yeah. I want to make my check. You know what I mean? I like, I like the idea of <coughs> someone wants my service, and then I can tell you them what the price is. just want to be complacent. Right. To be completely honest with you, yeah. I want to be able to, you know, I used to hate my dad, like fucking hating him for a lot of reasons. And I had to go through all that shit, you know, like get through all of my bullshit to realize that he did a lot of positive things as much as he did negative. And I had to like concentrate on those positive things. And some of the positives were like, I watched him collect a check for basically his kids, you know, and so he can feed his family. And then he, once his mother died, I saw him get so rattled that he needed to change or, he, or something was bad was going to happen with him. And that's why he started his own thing. And he left his job with almost no money and started this thing. My grandmother died, then left us a large sum of money. And it just fucking took off, man. Like, and he was happy, like genuinely happy because he was doing something for himself. And that's what I was struggling with when I was even in the academy. I was like... You know, I just want to collect a check. I just want to do everything different than my dad. Like, I don't ever want to be like my dad. And then then I was just like, instead of being stupid and trying to fight things, look at the positives and just try to make them better. Um, and that's, that's what was a huge decision for me to, to not do firefighting and to do my own thing. So, and to be honest with you, I, th- I think I, I'm, I'm way happier doing this than I think I would be doing that. Yeah, I think that's, what, that's I think everyone with a firefighter, I don't really think, Anyone who really goes in the attention, like, yeah, I want to save lives. It's more of like, I want to be able to tell people I'm a firefighter. Basically, and that's what I hated. I went in there because I wanted to save lives. Like, I was a Christian missionary, and then I wanted to go, okay, well, what can I do with that? Up to where I was, you know, I'm not making any money, but now I have to because I'm, I need to live. So I was like, what's, what's a thing for me to do? And that made the most sense to me. It was like, well, why don't you go in the, in the medical field? You're too stupid to be a doctor or even a nurse probably, but firefighters can be pretty dumb you should check out that avenue and i was like let's fucking do it and then i just found like the politics of everything too it just bothered me a lot of it bothered me i know it's pretty hard to get into academy you got to like do a bunch of volunteer you got to volunteer for a while right um the one i did it was it was i think the prerequisites was had to be an emt and work as an emt and have like two thousand hours or something like that and they get paid dog shit right what they get paid like minimum wage because you have to emt is the worst job in the world like, I fucking hated that job. The worst job in the world. It's like, um, it's like shit pay, though, right? Oh, it's minimum wage. Yeah. Because you can pay that because so many people have to go through that, right? So they're, they're always... The whole process is is people, especially firefighters, they know, they know like, how it, it can be really easy to the public to access it, right? To get into this job, this field. So they put a lot of hurdles in your way. And that is the, all right, well... If you want to become a firefighter, you need to have – there's always there's the same prerequisites, which is like either EMT, but nowadays it's paramedic. So paramedic, academy, 
and you need your hours and you need to be working at like AMR or something like that. And then they look at you and actually will will consider you. If you don't have just one of those things, forget about it. You'll be you'll just you're just wasting your time. Um, and then even if you do get an interview process, it's it's fucking, like it's a nightmare. Interview process are nightmare. It's normally like a three to five panel board that you go up there and they just ask you really difficult questions that have absolutely nothing to do with really firefighting as much as it is they're asking you who you are and what type of person you are. I love watching those guys in the store because they're just scoping for chicks the entire time. Because they usually go in as a group because they do their shopping for their, mm-hmm. uh, their house. Mm-hmm. It's so funny to watch. It was weird when you hit me up and said uh, he wanted to have you on uh, back on when we were here before. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I was like, he's a firefighter, right? Because last time I'd seen you, yeah. you were like working on it and were really gung-ho about it. I just assumed yeah. your personality, you were a firefighter. Yeah. But then after coming here last time, I was like, oh, this makes way more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and like I said, man, I don't think I would have been happy. I, I really don't think I would have. Like, I just, I can't. I didn't go to the military for a reason. I can't fucking stand being told what to do. It's, I just, I just it's really hard. I didn't do I well. I can't stand it. And that's what that that job is paramilitary. Like it, it is the military. And I remember I had a few like instructors that I fucking couldn't stand. Like I, there was a couple times where I'm like, I'm gonna fucking knock your bitch ass out. Um, and that, and they, they like even knew it. And they drove. They, once they figured out that I didn't like them, they made it even worse. And they, it's just like. How in the hell could you work for your dad then if you're like that? My dad doesn't work there. That's the best part. He's been retired for forever. So it's <laughs> working out over there. It's kind of like my own little gig, which is great because I have like I can basically do what I want. And that's what helps helps out a lot for me as far as staying sane over there. How many employees are there over there? I think we have 22. Damn. 22 employees. It's busy as all hell too. It's been great. Fantastic. And you're just Monday through Friday? Oh, no, I'm there Monday through Thursday. And then, um, yeah, and then I'm here Friday through Sunday. I work every day. And then even, like, after I get done work over there. Sometimes, like, well, my job is over there is I'm, I'm an engineer. So I do all the engineering. I tell the machines, like, where well, you need to cut a hole here or whatever. So if I get a lot of my shit done, I'll just come back over here if I have other work that I need to do. Like, if I have a table I need to build, I'll just come back here make a table real quick. Um, the great thing about working with wood is a lot of, a lot of the stuff that I have to do takes 24 hours to dry yeah. gluing, varnishing, whatever it is I have to fucking do. A lot of it takes 24 hours so I can do whatever I got to do, cut it all up, glue it together, go to work. And then once I get back to work, I can do this process. So it's just a matter of matter of balancing all this bullshit out. <clears throat> Sorry. I got to pee really bad. Go ahead. Dude, I'm so bad with math. I'm looking at his measurements over here. Yeah, I don't know what that means. If you did it, you'd be more comfortable with it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Literally, after uh, you try to tutor me, I will never go finish finish what I have <laughs> in school. Dude, since we were up here last, and because of this fucking podcast and talking to Lee, like I'm gung ho about not working for somebody anymore. Yeah, Lee was definitely inspiring. I was, st- I was a little confused on what he was talking about when he was saying that the goal is to find something that you sell very little of. I was kind of lost on there when he said that. No. I, I understand what he, what he means. Like, basically, like, you're, find something that you can handle yourself. No, find, but, find, he's saying find a specialty. Find something that a company can't make a thousand of. Because if a big company can make, you know, five million of something, they're already doing it. But if a big company is selling something that is not that they don't sell a lot of and they're selling it for a high price, you can undercut them because a big company has a lot more overhead than a small person, a small company. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Because Lee was talking about, because you know, a, bi- a big company sells a, a, a rack similar to his for you know, three or $400, yeah. and then he sells them for $100 a piece or you know, 150 whatever it is. Did you listen to number 12? Oh, which one? Remind me. When uh, Be Your Own Boss. Were... Oh, yeah, I listened, I listened like half of it, the first half. You sell very little of? Yeah. Have you guys have seen some of my, my bullshit, yeah. right? I have the shelves. That's, I mean, I make a lot of money on, on custom work. And it, I'm trying to figure out what I really want to do with this. If I want to go down this custom path, because I make good money doing that, or if I'm doing this mass production thing, 
and then going out to like swap meets and trying to sell it there. But fortunately for me, because I do have like all of those great machines that I have access to and I can control them, I, I can make these products in mass quantities, like thousands and thousands of them. And once you start making like thousands and thousands of them, my overhead is gone. Like it probably cost me maybe 25 cents to make one bracket, but I'm selling that bracket for 10 bucks. So you make, see what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's definitely helpful. But the other thing is you have to, you have to make a product that someone's going to buy that thing and they're going to want to buy that thing. And that's the hard part. Cause I mean, I have like, like, like those brackets. Um, I have a bunch of them and I've sold quite a bit of them, but not everybody wants them cause not everybody wants to do a DIY project. So who knows, man, I'm just still, still trying struggling. I'd say the hard part now though is social media. Like, like we were talking earlier, if you're not on social media and you're not mm. good at it, like you're losing money mm. and I'm terrible at it. I have to subcontract that out. Like I just figured this out. I'm really bad at social media cause I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't ever really go on Instagram because I don't really give a fuck about what other people are doing. Is that, that's so rude, but I don't know. That's how I feel like I'm not, I don't want to go see your baby because it's fake. Yeah. It just drives me crazy. Let's set this perfect picture up and let's post it. <laughs> I took like 48 photos before this. <laughs> God, I just heard somebody talking about that on a podcast where it's like, you know, these, all these people out there with these perfect pictures, but what nobody realizes they've taken 50 to get to that one. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm spending so much time just trying to get the perfect photo to put on Facebook so you can get to maximize your amount of likes. Yeah. And then what is it? Like, people are just going crazy for likes out there. What the fuck? It's nothing. You know what I mean? It's, you hit a button. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody's typing you a message. Yeah. But I'm, actually, though, likes, that's what gets you. That's what gets you, like, these models and all these, like, these pranksters, that's what gets them big. And then, they, and then they get picked up because they can get advertisement on their yeah, shit. Yeah, because you get like, oh, wow, this their picture was liked fucking a thousand times. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, we can advertise on them. and That's how YouTubers make their money. Yeah. They're just just from advertisement. Yeah, every million views is $20,000. That's crazy. So, I mean, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about the last podcast that you get these people that are on there that are fucking... Stupid ass parents that will like I'm not going to say stupid Because they're making money A lot of money off of it They'll buy like little play sets And they'll act Scenes from a little cartoon out And they got millions of views From kids watching it Because they have kids yeah. YouTube And kids love these weird ass videos Dude You guys have kids Why don't you practice this shit I was telling Jeremy I want, I, I want to do it I want to set up Fucking something in my garage And like I'll Get so into character With the voice <laughs> Little boys. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I was like, oh, Peppa Pig. <laughs> Some of the videos are really weird, though. Like that's my other problem with it is like I couldn't do it without feeling like a piece of shit. Yeah, that's. Kinda, I could totally do it if the money started coming. In. I'll tell you what, you <laughs> film everything and I'll edit it and post it for you. No. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, if you film it for me, then yeah, I'll act everything out. Yeah, I'll get so into character. Where are we at? Uh, a while. One twenty. That was it? Yeah. Fuck, fuck, we've been talking about for a long time. Well, yeah. we did talk for a long time because we were talking for like an hour before we started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what we talk about. That's what sucks with the podcast is we'll, instead of like, get here, just set everything up and then jump on the mic, we, we have to like do like, like, hey, so what's been going on? And it's like, why don't we do it on the podcast? Well, to be fair, you guys went through about 40 minutes of stories that we couldn't record. Well, we can. We totally can. Yeah, I don't, what were we talking about that we couldn't record? Well, we just started talking about, you know, Havasu and... I didn't think you want to talk about that on the podcast. Let's do that. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. That's dude. a terrible idea, You're, dude. I would, I would. We can talk about way more trouble than you were. That's like a good, like, yeah. I see her often. Well, then let's do it. No. <laughs> yeah. And we spent time talking about how how much of an asshole you are and pulling information out of people. Yeah, but everybody knows that. It's so annoying. Like when I was actually trying to date for a while, like he wanted to know every detail. It's like I, I gotta like care now. There's somebody, dude. I've been in a relationship forever now, dude. But like, it's like you ask questions like a female asks questions. Dude, I want to know detail because I, I leave that and like, dang, that's so cool. I remember <laughs> I would get his tender. I'd be like, hey, can I can I see your tender? And I would like go through and like pictures, like, like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> like it was like a fun game. <laughs> Tinder's like the devil because it make it makes you like it made me feel like an attention whore. Uh, I don't have Tinder. What were you on? You said you were on Tinder. Yeah, I was. I got off of it because I felt like a dirty, dirty man. Why? 
Because it's probably like what you were just saying. It's like, I don't oh, know. I, I love the attention. When I have a mutual match, message them. I have like 15 conversations going on. It's ridiculous. Yeah. How, wait, how, how, is, how do you feel dirty? I didn't feel dirty. I just felt like a pip. Bang them. Yeah, no, I, I know. Just, how, dude, I had one girl that. Is there a bad story from Tinder? Oh, most of them are bad. That's why I got rid of it. Yeah, let's hear this. Like, like crazy? Like batshit crazy? I didn't have any bad stories. Um, not batshit crazy. I had one that was like, it was a hot dog. Down the, it wasn't even a hot dog down the hallway. You could park a fucking semi truck in her. It was so blown out. I was just like, what the fuck? That one was really bad. Does she have kids? No. No. She just has a wide cervix. Uh, she was a black girl. I'm guessing a lot of black dudes have been in that. That's so false, man. You can stick a champagne bottle in there. It's going to go back to normal. What are you talking about? It's not going to be blown out from getting hammered by guys. That's exactly what being blown out means. Dude, but that's not true. It's that's a wife's not, tale. That's so... Google Dude, that shit. Andrew, I thought you were a smart man. <laughs> I never claimed to be a smart man, I claimed Ryan. I for you to be a smart man. And now I am just, not a smart man. That is the dumbest thing I heard. That's like talking in high school like... Oh, dude. Wait, wait. Are you guys for real? Yeah, because it's not real. It opens up for a baby and goes back to normal. Even still, it won't go all the way back to normal. Dude, I've vagina, heard... Vagina feels exactly the same. It might not look the same, but it feels exactly the same. Yeah, the outside looks same. different. See? The... But the inside is still the same. <laughs> she, she's just designed that way. I don't yeah. know. Well, maybe she does a lot of, like, Kegels or whatever those are called. Kegels. I always wanted, like, wanted to have sex with a black chick. How was that? Besides her being loosey-goosey. Loosey-goosey, that... I'm, it's just not. She's not my first one. Um, they're great. Yeah, she's like. Because I like. Well, I watch a lot of twerk videos. <laughs> so I was like, I just want like some like crazy, like just like freaky, like let me let me twerk on top of you kind of chick. Yeah, dude. It's it is more like a dance move. Yeah, see, that's, that's what for I'm sure. I want to be in, like Jasmine, fully aware of like my obsession that want want to have sex with a black chick. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about it quite often. Yeah, I've done it a couple times. It's it's like a dance move. That's what it really feels like. Or like these chick, like they'll do splits. They're, they're, oh. they're splits, and then they're they're bouncing their up ass up and down. I'm like, I would love for that to happen on top of me. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> I did have a girl that um, she tried to kill herself in my bathtub. Whoa, what the fuck? That was pretty gnarly. That was when I was living in, in uh, Echo Park. At where? Echo Park in L.A. What, what, how, how? Dude, okay. Here's a good story. You guys will like this one. I'm in shock right now. So, Jesus. So, uh, uh, my my buddy, real close buddy of mine, was dating this girl at this time, and she had a friend that they wanted to introduce us to. So, they did. We hit it off. She's pretty crazy. Like, you can tell she's fucking not all there. She's pretty nutty. But she's a good time. Loves to have a good time. So, we hung out a couple times and, you know, did her, did her business, whatnot. <laughs> so one time it was actually after we were getting back from Havasu it was the same day it was Sunday um, I hit her up and she like FaceTimes me and I'm like Recent? yeah this was in, uh, in the summer oh, well, not yeah. this last summer the, the summer before that so about a year and a half ago um, so she FaceTimes me and I'm like hey what's up and she's just like what are you doing and she like flashes me one of her nipples and I'm like come over she's like all right and she's like i've been drinking though and i was like well don't get another dui because she just fucking got a dui like three days before so this girl hit and re- hit a fucking cop car that's parked on alvarado but it was parked like on the street she clipped it freaked out and tried to run away the cop wasn't even in the cop car and she goes to make a u-turn cop sees her make this this other u-turn like down the street lights her up and she crashes into my neighbor's car at the time, she I didn't know this. At the time, she was on Ambien and Adderall. So she's like... An upper and a downer? Yeah. No, she was crazy, dude. And I'm telling you, this girl was crazy, but she was also crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. She socked me in the face one time when we were having sex, and I thought it was like the most amazing thing. It was, I was like pissed, but I was like, that was kind of tight. Because she was so like passionate, like just... Oh, Fuck you, dude! I would kill her. Oh, I You're wanted to. You, I was just like, Ugh. but she liked that stuff. She was like, if I like gradually, that she'd be like harder, and I'd be like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, she was crazy like that. But okay, so right, she hits. She hits the neighbor's car. I get a call. I'm upstairs. She's frantically crying. I can hear the cop in the background, like, 
ma'am, you need to step out of the car. And I'm like, oh, shit. She's like, I'm right out front. So I go running down there. And now there's another car that's another cop car that's coming up. And he's like, do you know her? And I'm like, yeah, she's my friend. And he was just like, oh, okay. And he was like asking her questions. He's like, you know that she hit that car and made a legal U-turn right here? And I was just like, yeah. And he was just like, all right, well, uh, we're going we're gonna to talk to her for a little bit. So just hang tight here. So then they're trying to figure out the car that they hit, whose who's it was, so they can get that person there. It turns out being my next-door neighbor. That's embarrassing. Yeah. So next-door neighbor comes down, and I'm like, oh, fuck, it's you guys? Oh, I'm so sorry. And they're like, no, it's fine. It's fine. You're fine. Luckily, because she was a pretty little white girl, that she got completely out of everything scot-free. Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, she's going to jail. She's, I'm going to watch her go to jail. She didn't go to jail. They were like, she's with you, right? Take good care of her. Could you park the car for her? And I was just like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? I've been drinking too. <laughs> <laughs> She's a really pretty white girl, so that's what's what. Um, and I park her car. We go to the, my, my, how my unit was set up was like, you walk through the front entrance, and there's two sets of, two flights of stairs, and then I'm on the third floor, and it's something like out of the shining. It's a really long hallway with doors on each side. And I'm almost at the very end. As soon as we get inside, she takes her dress off. So now she's just wearing a thong and her little fucking bando, whatever those things are, bando bra. And I'm like, oh my God, there's cameras because this is like, you know, common space. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And she like runs upstairs. I get to the top flight of the stairs. There's a, <laughs> it's like, there's her bando bra. Oh shit. <laughs> Keep taking another step. Like it's a, like a dog leg. There's her thong. And I'm like, oh my God. So she's fucking butt naked on the third floor. My neighbor across the way, this funny ass black dude, he comes out and he goes, Oh shit, what up? <laughs> and then he sees me and he goes, Oh shit, what up? <laughs> and I'm like, What's up, dude? He was just like, All right. And he goes back inside real quick. It was just fucking funny. Where, so, so she was on top of the roof? Like, where was she at? No, no, no. This is once we parked her car, which was on the bottom floor, yeah. we had to go up to the third floor. Oh, to your place, I guess. Yeah. So right. that's where you were in my place. So we get in there, and as soon as we get in there, she. Yeah, it was awesome. She goes crazy. Just like... Like, it was awesome. But she was acting super weird the whole time. And I was just like, what the fuck is your deal? And she kept going in and out of the bathroom. But I knew that that girl loved cocaine. So, like, I wasn't, like, tripping. I thought she was just doing cocaine. Yeah. And then she, well, she's, like, kind of, like, losing it a little bit. Like, just freaking out. She's sitting on my couch. And, like, she pulls out this pill bottle. And she's, like, just fucking forking it with this knife and going in and like putting it into her nose and i'm like what the fuck is that is that coke and she was just like no and i was just like okay what what are you doing she's like it's ambient and i was just like trying to go to bed and she was just like she was like she was fucking i couldn't explain to you like she was crazy man like like a little bit crazed and then she like grabbed the knife and she's like because i tried to take the pill bottle from her she like grabbed the knife and she's like don't fucking touch it and i was just like okay crazy i was like you need to go you need to go home so I'm trying to kick her out, and she fucking loses it, and then grabs the knife, runs into my bathroom, locks the door, and she's like, I'm cutting my wrist. I'm cutting my wrist. And I'm like, holy fuck, what do I do right now? So I called my neighbor from across the way. Eric, he came over. I called my buddy Ryan. He was, I was like, dude, I don't know what the fuck to do. She's like locked herself in my bathroom. She's got a knife. She said she's cutting herself. Like, what should I fucking do? Should I break down the door? Should I call the cops? And then finally what I ended up doing was I ended up like, I was just banging on the door and she unlocks it. And like, I came in there and she's laying completely naked in the bathroom and she's got like the knife and she's like running it along her wrist, but she's not cutting herself. She's just lightly doing it, but not vertically or not like horizontally vertically. She's doing like right she way. wanted to do it the right way. And I was just like, Oh my God. So I, I like fucking tackled her on the ground, got the knife away from her, grabbed all the knives that I could and then hid them from her like a child who was trying to kill herself and I was trying to kick her out and she like wouldn't leave, but she ended up passing out on my couch and I was just like, okay, fine. I'm going upstairs and going to bed. And I went upstairs and went to bed and then I, she never, she left sometime in that morning and I never saw her again. It was crazy though. Fucking crazy. My heart's racing a little bit. <laughs> Dude, you guys have no idea how scared I was. Oh my God. I would have for I'm, sure called the cops. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you're not yourself in my apartment because then yeah. I have to move out. <laughs> Dude, because I was thinking about, I was like, what if she would have done it? And then, you, you know, like, what if, what if they're like, well, what if you killed her? 
And they start questioning me, and it's like, oh, my God. Well, luckily, no matter happen. where she slid her wrist, you would have had plenty of time for an ambulance to get there. Yeah, and I knew what to do. So Yeah, you were paramedic. So. Yeah, so um, EMT. EMT, I don't know the difference. <laughs> yeah. So she was in good hands. <laughs> Andrew just puts duct tape on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what to do, Tommy. <laughs> you good, girl. Go, go, go get your son. Yeah. All right, see, I didn't do what most people did on Tinder. Like, I didn't want to have to deal with, like, bullshitting, so I just was up front with every chick I talked to on there. I was like, hey, I'm not looking for anything. So basically you're just like, hey, you want fuck? <laughs> basically. But he, without being the douchebag, like, hey, DTF? No, I just said, hey, fucking looking for a friend I'd love to go out with, but I don't want a relationship. Mm-hmm. And so I found a few chicks that were down with that. Okay. One of them was black. That turned out to be a one-night stand. Great. It was awesome. Texted her the next day, fucking never heard back. I was like, cool. <laughs> 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 I, I did not have that response through Tinder. Almost all of them, I like. The reason I lock my door every day, it's not because I, I know I live in the ghetto, but it's not because of that. It's because there's a few girls that I'm, I question their sanity, and I think that they would break in here and try to do some shit. Like, fucking use me. Oh, dude, it's crazy. So, when chicks say it, it's like, no, you're dumb. Like, what do you mean? You sucked the- me on the first date. Exactly. It's like, well, first of all, you sucked my dick on the first date. I didn't even get the chance to get to know you. I'm I thought you were really hot, ever. so I started hanging out with you a little bit more. But then once I figured out who you were because you showed me your true colors, I don't want to be with that. No. And I, I, I have standards, like, you know what I mean? And <laughs> they might be really, really low, but they're standards. And a lot of girls just wouldn't meet them. And then once I tell them, hey, you know, like, this just isn't working out. Oh, my God. I've had some that have been awesome. They're like, all right, I, I can get that. I see that. And those girls are awesome. And some of them are like, you fucking used me. You abused me. You made me believe that you loved me. And I was like, I never fucking told you I loved you, you crazy bitch. I said, hey, do you want to come on <laughs> my dick? And you said, yes. <laughs> He's right. Yeah, Did I you went. just tell the mic that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just... <laughs> that way everybody knows he's pissing. <laughs> Dude, I was way I was so worried about dealing with that shit that plus I had like a really busy schedule. I didn't have much free time. Mm-hmm. Well, that I had my, every m- mostly all my free time was with my son, so it was like I had very little time to date. So I was just overly honest all the time. Yeah. So that way, because I, I did not want to deal with that shit. <laughs> yeah. And did it work out? Yeah, I had I had zero bad experiences on Tinder. I had very few experiences with Tinder outside mm-hmm. of you know messaging. Because when you're that honest, it's hard to get a date with a chick. <laughs> There was one brown I dated that what really kind of like honest? had a crush on, but then I was just like, we were both like, yeah, this isn't going to work out. <laughs> what kind of honesty are you talking about here? No, just fucking flat out tell him. Like, look, I would love to have a girl that would that would do, can do girlfriend things with me, but I don't want a girlfriend. I just want a friend with benefits. That's it. And I want like a real friend. How come you wanted that? Because I didn't want a relationship. It's my, I wanted because I was recently divorced. So uh. I wasn't wasn't even trying to get into a relationship at all. Right. It was easier that way. No, it makes sense. Do you think you want to get married again? No. You don't want to get married again? No. Over it? I have these weird thoughts because I'm really happy with my girlfriend right now. And I have these weird thoughts sometimes when I'm with her and looking at her like, I could totally marry you. But I'm terrified to get married again. Why? What's, what, what's, what, what's, what's the difference between... The like, sen- the, like, sense that you're trapped. You feel like you're trapped? I felt trapped yeah. when I was married. I can see that. I, I mean, feel trapped but, after when I'm on the well, date number one. Like Ryan's level, fucking, he's trapped regardless. He's not married, but he's trapped. That's the whole point. I mean, it's going to happen eventually, right? It's just I've been pretty good at putting it off. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but there is something about once you get married, it's like for real now. Yeah, I just feel like, I don't know. I've never been married, so I don't know. But you can totally see that where you're just like, I'm stuck with this one vagina for the rest of my life. It's not a cool thought. Mm-mm. It's not natural. I, I just avoid marriage just because money. I'm not down to go spend 10 grand on a wedding when I have yeah, two kids. That I can income pay. taxes are better. I've, I've heard a total opposite. After I got married, my, I, got, I owed money every year. What? Because your combined income, they treat, instead of treating you like two people, they treat you as one individual. One, yeah. So that means you're, like, sometimes it'll bump you up to the next tax bracket. But if you have a kid, I thought that... Oh, the kid is about $1,000 a year. If people think, like, oh, you got a kid, you get mad money no. back. Like, no, you don't. You yeah. don't get mad money back? No. Then I don't get anything. Man, I'm not going to have a kid. Then I thought I was just going to have a family just so I can make more money off of them. When you have multiple kids, it helps out, I'm but joking. it's still not worth the money. I was totally kidding. <laughs> I, want, I want a family for monetary reasons. They're just going to rob me. <laughs> Dude, people in the military do that. 
they'll have kids. Because they get paid. They, yeah. yeah, they get paid by that. That's why I thought that it was the same thing on the civilian side. Just no. tripping out. This one guy I knew, he was a sergeant. I forget his fucking name. Super skinny guy. Oh, okay, well, I don't know what it is with the guys in the military. These skinny dudes in the military always have fat-ass wives. I don't understand it. Maybe they weren't fat when they first met them. No. I see fat. that a lot. I, th- I see that everywhere just in life. Super skinny dudes love big women. Well, maybe, maybe Super skinny white dudes. Maybe just more of a... More, I looked at it more in the military, I don't know. Because I really don't look at people that much nowadays. But he, I heard him talking, overheard him talking about fucking him and his wife were going to get into fostering kids, and he focused on talking about the money of it. So fucked. And you but, treat those kids like shit. Yeah. I was like, what? Because but, you, you just, you're taking... Uh, but if you're in something for the money, you're, that's not... You're but not I was scared. conflicted because he, he wasn't a douchebag. He was a nice guy. And he had kids, and him and his wife had kids. They had like three or four kids. You can make some really good money on that. You know what else you can make really, really good money on? It is special needs humans. Oh, and I've heard that. Yes. So, And my buddy, my neighbor right over here, he's getting into it. Wait, and you talked about that last time. Did I talk about this no, last time? No, you didn't. I don't no, think I, I did. Heard this. So someone told me this recently. Something about set up a house for the handicapped. Oh, no, Caesar. Was it Caesar? Yeah, Caesar. Yeah, it was Caesar. Caesar. He wants to rent out his house and have like a special needs home. Right. So what my buddy's doing is he's... He's going to buy a house, right? And he's going to make it handicapped accessible. And then basically, however many rooms you have, you have to make it accessible. Yeah, so you, yeah. yeah, it's fucking crazy, right? They can make up to like 25000 a month. 25000 a month, just boom. That means you, you can, can put pay like off two your house. in one room, that's why. No, so you want to buy a bigger house, one that has like four to five bedrooms. And they don't have to be like the biggest bedrooms. They just they need to be a bedroom. Because from what my understanding is of it, the people that will li- be living there, they go through their, their programs, their day programs, and they have, like, night programs as well. So they're really only there, like, on the weekends and at nights. And they go to bed pretty early. So you only have to, like, feed them on the weekends. And that is where the most money comes in, out of your pocket. And also owning the property. Everything else, all the funding that comes in from, from them is, like, far exceeds what you have to put in. So you, your overhead is almost completely even after the six months. Crazy. Six months and you're completely even. From that point forward, you're just making dollar bills. Dollar, dollar bills. It's just one of those things where you have to have money to make money. You have to buy a house. Do you guys have any money I can borrow? I'm going to buy a house. <laughs> I'm still trying to buy a bigger house. My little two-bedroom house. You have a, you, did you buy that? Yeah, I bought it four years ago. You bought a house? Bought a house. Oh, man. I'm, I'm a grown-up, dude. Remember, we just talked about trying to be a man. Yeah, sucks. <laughs> it? How much do you pay in, in equity, then? What's your, if you don't mind me asking? What's, my, your, what's my mortgage? Yeah, what's your, what's your mortgage? Look like? uh, well, I refinanced, so I got a lower interest rate. So now I'm at, uh, I pay $1,300 a month. Uh, when I first when I first bought my house, I was paying 1500 That's Fif- what I paid for this place. I was paying 1501 I paid 1500 for this place. And I'm renting it. I'm stupid. I told you I'm not a smart man. This is a rad place, dude. I'm so stupid, though. It's a it's a lot of money. My overhead. I feel bad. I've uh, done a lot worse. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear about it. It'll make me feel better. So, uh, married in terrible relationship for a long time. Made a lot of poor financial decisions because I just didn't give a fuck. So whatever we bought was bought on credit. Ouch. I I had the good credit, so most under my name. So I got stuck with all that. Then uh. Bought and sold, uh, we bought a condo together that we sold. The only benefit to selling that condo is I got a little bit of money out of it that I needed at the time mm-hmm. to pay off a lot of other shit. So buying a house isn't the greatest thing, but renting stupid is stupid because you feel like you're wasting your money. I'm wasting so much. Fucking more expensive. Like I, my place is smaller than his, and I pay like three hundred dollars more a month than you. Is your place bigger than this? I don't. May, maybe I don't think so. Now, what's your square footage here? Uh, I think it's um, 1496, I believe. Yeah, it's bigger. My, my house is 1094. Yeah, that's because I think upstairs probably. But, yeah, that's fucking... I've been thinking about it because I, I could technically... Well, I, I don't have the credit anymore. You know what sucks? I used to have fucking kick-ass credit until I tried to get married. It started with your street bike. The street bike t- didn't help either. Actually, the street bike I paid off well, relatively on time, too, so it didn't ding me that hard. Um, you know, that was really weird. So 
they repoed the bike, right? And then I was able to buy it off because it was only like a six thousand dollar bike. I was able to pay off after everything. At like at the end of the day, it was only like twenty five hundred bucks I owed them. So I paid that off pretty quick, and it was like nothing ever happened. But with the, the ring, oh, fucking ring, ruined my life. I had that thing. I bought that thing for like 2000 bucks, right? And then she obviously kept it, and I just stopped giving a shit. So I stopped making that payment. I got it down to 900 bucks. That's all I owed on it. Stopped making payments on it. Ugh. I got a phone call like last summer, and it was like, you owe us $6,000. And I was like, oh, fuck me. So I still just kept building, just building, 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 and dinging the shit out of me. So my credit score went from seriously like 740 to 530 in like three months. It's so stupid. It's fucking wild, dude. It's so dumb because like one stupid mistake. Where's the forgiveness, credit people? Well, Fuck. dude, I, I had to put my mom's um, mom was living up with time. I had to put her electricity. In. My mom always had bad credit. So I had to put put it under my name. I was living in San Diego. <clears throat> well, it turns out I'm, she had to go to collections. And it was in there for like a year. It was just a ninety dollar bill. Oh, God, dude, they, that almost stopped me from buying my house. I had to write a letter on why I didn't pay off because those small bills are what get you. Yeah. They're like, oh, if you can't pay off a ninety dollar bill, what happens when you know you owe us you know mm-hmm. two hundred thousand? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I had to write a letter explaining the situation. It was like as soon as I found out about it, it was paid off. My credit was still good, but that was still a mark on my credit because it went to collections. Yeah. It's, it's going to go away. It's not that big of a deal. But it was a $90 charge, and that almost stopped me from buying my house. It's so stupid, isn't it's ridiculous. it? Ridiculous. It's so stupid. Yeah, I, I just, I don't. When I had high credit, I just paid my bills, you know, but I didn't have anything expensive, like, at all. I remember, I remember Capital One wanted to, I'm like 24 years old at the time, and Capital One wanted to give me, like, $75,000 credit. And I was like, <laughs> No, please no. It's so wild, dude, how easy it was to get a credit card back then. Now it's fucking, your limits are nothing. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I was always amazed at how much I get approved for. Because I'd, I'd go apply for something, I'm not getting approved. You've been approved. Like, what the fuck? How am I approved for this? Yeah. When I bought, remember when I bought my motorcycle? <laughs> I bought it at 19% APR. Damn. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, I was, I was, what, fucking 18 years old when I bought it? Hey, 19 years old? Still, an 18-year-old might say, like, I don't care if it's 30. I can do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever that number means, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember once You're I... You're telling me I could have the bike, right? And I missed one payment, and it went up to 30, like 31% interest. And that's when, like, my mom got my bill, and she was just like, hold on. And she did the math. And, like, later she's like, you'll be paying this bike off for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> and I was just like, really? And she was like, yeah, you need to get rid of it. And I was just like, well, how, how do you do that? Dude, being an adult sucks, doesn't it? Being an adult sucks when you're not getting good advice also. True that. Like we, didn't, we didn't have the most reliable source of information when it came to credit from our mom. Oh, God. So I grew- <laughs> Like I'm, I'm honestly surprised that I, I have good credit. Like after watching my mom do what she did when we as growing up. Mm-hmm. Was, I think after watching what mom did, and then you watched all my bullshit. Yeah. Like you watched everything I went through with my ex, so like it like formed like like I'm never de- dealing with that with women. I'm never spending money that way. <laughs> like, well, he, he watched you guys and learned. I remember you used to actually talk about that stuff too back in the day, and just be like, "Oh no, I've seen some pretty stupid things. I'm not going to do those stupid things." Well, yeah, like with with him. Like, that's why I used to be, like, that's kind of why I am the, the way with women. Like, with Jasmine, like, you're never going to punk me. Like, that's just not going to happen. Like, you're not going to get your way. Like, because, and it's stupid to think like that, but I'm so afraid, like, because Jeremy's ex used to run that relationship. And I remember I, I used to look at it like, that shit is fucking not happening to me. Mm-hmm. And that's how I kind of, like, now I've gotten older and it's like, dude, Jasmine's such a good girl. I'm not going to fucking, like, but when I, when I was younger, I used to Jasmine like shit because I was like, you're not going to fucking, no one's going to tell me what to do. Like, mm-hmm. especially not a woman. Like, that's not going to happen. Yep. You know what's funny is I never thought I would be in that kind of situation, and I totally got lost into it. And I had no idea that I was that person. I had no fucking clue until after the fact. And then, like, you know, the blinders get peeled back a little bit, and you're like, dude, you've been a bitch for the last however long you've been in this relationship. <laughs> dude, it, it's, it's, it's scary because, like, I would never, ever think, especially, like, my personality – and, you know, like, my vibrato, you like, just my whole kind of being of who I am. I don't like being told what to do. I never thought I would be like that. Ever, 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 ever. 
and then it did. <laughs> it's all because of sex. <laughs> Stupid sex. So at least, you, at least you, you had something. I was like that for no reason. Just, I just fucking. Well, because I got married for a stupid reason. I got married uh, when I was... 20. Yeah, it was like a month before I turned 21. And it was because I was leaving for Iraq. Yep. I was like, fuck yeah, I'll make like an extra, you know... 50, no, it was like about an extra $2,000 a month I made married. That's great. And then I gave her $500 a month. <laughs> <laughs> Still well, that and she had my cell phone in my truck and... Yeah. So, And health insurance. It was the first time she ever had health insurance. Did she take advantage of that? Oh yeah, she was type one diabetic. Really? Yeah. Oh man. So do you do you still have to pay for that? Even what? with the health care, like the deductibles and all of that. I don't pay for any of her shit. She's okay. remarried. Oh, she's remarried. Yeah, because we got our divorce was finalized in I think January of 2012, mm. and she got married in the summer of 2012. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy was a fucking wreck when that happened. Like he's the one that that like separated from it. But just kind of like in a weird place, like being away from, like he wasn't with his kid all the time. So, Jeremy, we're, we're drinking, we're drinking a lot at the time. I didn't have, I wasn't, I didn't have Landon, so we we're going out a lot. But but Jeremy gets to the point where it's like, like stupid hammered, where it's like <laughs> yeah. he's half retarded. No, my nights were just blacked out. Mm-hmm. There wasn't any other pissing way. the couch. I never peed anywhere random. I never peed myself or anything. I mean, I've thrown up. Oh, I had one bad experience with you. Yeah, it was really bad. We, uh, <laughs> but I've never woken up with like in a puddle of piss or anything. Just a puddle of shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, uh, we went out and uh, I'm like telling Jeremy and like, this is how cool Jasmine. She hits, she hits me up. She knows I'm taking Jeremy out. She goes, be his wingman. Like, make sure he gets laid. I'm like, I can be his wingman. She's like, yeah, be his wingman. So I'm like, for sure. But we went to this bar. And uh, we knew the bartender. We were just, we were just gonna um, pregame there because she was he took us up for free. And we we're gonna go like actually like to like where chicks were at. Mm. And uh, there's this drink. It's called the Wong Special. Once you have the Wong Special, you dump them on the Wong side of the road. And this fucking drink is all alcohol. So we all drink one. But I don't think Jeremy ate anything all day. No, I didn't eat anything all day. So then we went. We go to this bar and, and we get there and Jeremy's like shit face. So I see this group of girls and I'm like, hey, all right, hey, let's. I'm gonna go up to this table and I'll bring you guys over. It was me, him, and his buddy Abe. Okay, by the way, at this point, I don't remember anything. I'm all really blacked out when we go to the second bar. <laughs> so I go up to this group of girls, and I start talking to them. So I wave Jeremy over. And the girl I started talking with, she had a kid. And I was like, oh, it's cool. It's like my brother's got a kid. She's like, really? How old's your kid? And, and he's like, uh. <laughs> and then I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, Jeremy, how old's fucking Silas? I'm like, I'm like irritated at this point. He's like, uh. Like, total just hammered. And then she's like, What's his birthday? And he's like, somewhere between August and December. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? So, like, she's like, this guy's a piece. So I grabbed Jeremy yeah, you and, like, awesome we, walked, right there. we walked downstairs. I'm like, you're fucking, like, you're not talking to anybody right now. <laughs> so they have this punching, you know, that. that yeah, the, the punching, yeah. The, 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 the boxing goal that comes down, you got to, you know, see how high you uh-huh. can score. Well, that's there. And, like, I keep getting a high score. And this is, like, drunk. Jeremy's like. Anybody want to challenge my brother? <laughs> Anybody like? It? I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> he fucking puts thirty dollars in this machine. So this thing was like coming down all night long, like 30, 30 punches full. Yeah. Like, it's a lot. And you got a sore shoulder the next morning. <laughs> so Jeremy's like, watch this. I'm gonna get a really high score. He he goes to the other side of the bar. He takes off running. <laughs> he he misses. He misses the glove, and then eats shit over the couch and flips over the couch. <laughs> And I'm like, and surprisingly, the security guard, like, he's not even doing anything. This is, like a, this is like a big bar. So we're like, all right, we need to get him out of here. So we get him out, and like, our, um, Jeremy's, Jeremy's buddy from the, um, the Army, he had an Audi. And he was one of those guys where, like, he loved his car. Mm-hmm. Like, one of those guys that, like, mm-hmm. you get a Ford Ranger, and be like, the Danger Ranger. Like, you know, just really obsessed yeah. with your car. And so uh, we get in, Jeremy's throwing up, and, like, he's like, oh, dude, I don't want to take him in the Audi. And Jeremy's like, fuck your Audi. This thing's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like just going on a tangent, and so our buddy Abe's at the brightest bulb. So we take off driving, and Jeremy's just running his mouth like, "Oh, babe, I drive a fucking Audi. Oh, I'm so cool!" <laughs> and so Jeremy's about to throw up again, and Abe's like, "Oh, fuck!" So he pulls over. He pulls right across the street from a police station, and it's not like the front of the building. No, it's where all the cops come and go. Like the <laughs> so. Jeremy gets out of the car and he goes to throw up in a bush. Well, he flips upside down in the bush where his legs are sticking out, and like me and Abe can't breathe. We're laughing. He's like, 
fucking motherfuckers. Get the fuck out of here. So, like, we pull his legs out. Jeremy, like, eats shit, falls back over on his back, and then just starts throwing up. So, we finally get him in the car. Abe leaves. And, uh, as soon as Jeremy steps out of the car, he just shit his pants. And then he's like, oh, that's my other bad shit story. I forgot. And then he's like, fuck. Ah, oh, fuck. And I'm like, Jeremy, shut the fuck up. At this point, I was an escrow in my house, and I moved out of my apartment, and I was living with my dad. And so he was staying with my dad also, and uh, I'm like, Jeremy, shut the fuck up. Then he, I can't get him to get up. He's, he's crawling. He's like, ah, <laughs> fuck. And, and at this point, I fully dressed in my clothes that night. Like before we went out, I, dre- I had him in like my new pair of pants. And like <laughs> Jeremy from Iraq, he doesn't wear boxers. So he shit in my pants. Oh, God. So I, I gave him those. Like, I'm not taking those. And uh, he's army crawling. Like he was in Iraq up to the door. I'm like, get the fuck up. He's like, I got it. Like, so you did go to some training. <laughs> so I finally get him up. Bit. I finally get him up and he's like I shit in the pit I'm like I know he did <laughs> so then we yeah we go inside and, and I had to fucking I had bathed him I had to wash his balls his ass oh. it was fucking disgusting cause the shit was like it was like a peanut butter like explosive dump <laughs> and I was telling Jeremy I was like never did I ever think I would shower you dude like I had to like wash scrub, your brother's balls I had to scrub shit off of him That's like so we're in the man. shower and I'm like I'm washing his body, dude. My dad comes in. I'm like, yeah. He dude, that's, <laughs> I'm getting such a great imagery of this. Like right now, I have you in board shorts, and you're in there. Like I wash my dog. <laughs> <laughs> and the the worst part about it was though, as I'm washing his body, he's like, I fucking love you, dude. And I'm like, don't say it right now. Please don't say it right now, dude. Please, please don't love me like that. I'm gonna clean your balls. Can you, <laughs> dude? And it was everything. Like, it was like changing. Like you don't obviously don't have kids, but when a baby shits in the diaper, it'll go, like, in the crevices above his yeah, balls. Yeah, you gotta lift the sack, don't you? And, like, well, it'll be, like, they have, like, side fat, like, next to their penis. Yeah, they have the little, the little rolls right here on their, or their inner thighs from the baby fat. Uh, and so you have these weird crevices you have to get into. And that's where he uh. had shit there. And I'm, like, trying to, like, get him to, and I'm telling him, like, dude, screw your body. He's like, okay, dude, I, I, fu- I fucking love you. I'm like, Jeremy, fucking <laughs> shut the fuck Stop up. Stop rubbing your naked body. So I've had Jeremy plenty of blackout me. nights, but this is one night that I've never experienced where I was awake for this many hours. I have no recollection of it. Because normally you black out and it's right about the time you're going to bed anyways. Or close yeah. to it. No, this was, like I was trying to help eight hours of blackout. <laughs> my dad was like, hey, like, well, I, I look back now and I'm like, fuck yeah, shit. Like, my dad was like, hey, do you want me to help you? I was like, it's cool, dad. Like, I just felt embarrassed for him. I was like, I, I got it. It's cool. Well, I think I, but now I'm like the hospital that night. You probably should have. Now I'm like, fuck yeah, help help me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good brother. I'll but tell you what just, I would have done. I would have took you out and hosted you. He was in you. a rough place at the time, so I was like, I, I didn't want anybody to know what he was going through. Uh, I still would have took you out and hosed you off. <laughs> yeah, that was like that was January, wasn't it? <clears throat> I don't remember. But I I don't know. Did you figure it was December twenty ninth, I believe, when I it was the night I decided to get divorced. The worst is like when I took off the pants. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, you got some new pants, dude. <laughs> like, I'm not, no matter what, like I was still you shit in my pants. <laughs> There's no erasing that image. It's so funny. I, I want them. you to take the positives away from tonight. You got a new outfit, man. Yeah. My thing is when I get super blackout drunk, I like to just get naked and pass out anywhere. That's just my thing. I've already done that. Fucking, I did that here. I woke up on the roof once. <laughs> oh my god! Butt ass fucking naked. How did you get up there? But there's a ladder that's over there, which I honestly, I think I get special abilities when I get blackout drunk. Wait, there's a ladder where outside the building? Yeah, outside. Can when you go outside, just right out there. Podcast? But it's got it's one of those things where it's like it's got the cover over it, so you have to hang on to the edges and use the wall like Spider Man crawl it, and then you can grab a rung and like get up there so you pass out naked on top of your roof and left my clothes down here so i climbed that thing naked <laughs> wait, wait, wait. the best is though if you were to wake up like sober and realize like i'm naked on my roof and now i have to get down i woke up at like 6 30 in the morning when the sun just blasting my asshole and i'm like oh fuck <laughs> hey, that'd be so funny if you go to google it means your spot and i was dead, it was just <laughs> <laughs> this is the drug dude and the way that I was sprawled out it looked like I was reaching for something and I just didn't get there quite in time and just fell over and that's how I passed out because I woke up and I was just like oh shit where the fuck am I oh my god you know when you when you black out drunk pass out 
even when you wake up in your bed, you're like, where am I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm on a fucking roof. <laughs> I had no idea. I was genuinely like, I am scared. What did I do? I'm scared. And then, like, I go and look over the edge, and I'm like, I'm at home. <laughs> I'm on my roof. <laughs> Oh, dude. So yeah. I had to climb down, and that was embarrassing because, like, <laughs> at this point, I'm not black. I'm still drunk because I'm still I'm definitely still drunk. But, like, I'm climbing down at 6 30 in the morning. People are starting to wake up, and I'm like, oh, God, I got to get inside somehow and not let people know that I just did that. And then uh, that was, that was like, one of the first. You were Googling the roof. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you, where weren't you? <laughs> you Googled you Google them and just fucking the Googling the roof. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did. Yeah, that's exactly where I woke up. Look at that. See that little crevasse? Right there? Yeah. That's what I woke up in. That area right there. Nobody saw you climb down? No car? Nobody saw me climb down, thank God. And that's a business right, right there. Like, that's a dental hygienist business. <laughs> and they get in at 6 o'clock in the morning. So that's why I was like, I'm butt naked. I have to go down these stairs. I can, luckily, I can see my clothes were, were, like, at the bottom of the stairs. Which for, uh, Why would you get in? Why do I do that? Like, I do this all the time, though. At some point, like, I get so drunk, I'm like, I fucking can't do clothes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the caveman kicks <laughs> yeah. Dude, I don't know why I do that. Maybe you just get really hot. I did. Uh, no, I was just super fucking blasted drunk. I never want, I never want, like, I hate wearing shirts, but, like, I feel, like, really, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, security? No, uh. So what I'm looking for. Oh, well, you keep thinking about that. I'm gonna get another beer and take a piss. Uh, no, uh, fucking. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, vulnerable. If I don't have pants on, I feel really vulnerable. Like. Hey, yeah, remember that raccoon story in my OB apartment? Yeah. yeah. I was naked and I was terrified because they might rip my dick off. Yeah, I don't. Know. I I can't. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I've never found that like, like, when Jasmine went out of town or I had the apartment or like when I lived in an apartment. When like my roommate would be out of town, I would never. That's not something I'd ever do. Like get naked and just walk around. I love walking around naked around my house. It's awesome. I, I like it for like five minutes when I got a shower. That's just because I like to dry off because I don't know how to use a towel. No way. The downside. I mean, what sucks about having a kid is you have to have clothes on. Like Brittany thought I was fucking weird because I I always walk around naked. She's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I just want to be naked." Yeah, I feel super vulnerable. Like I, I don't know. What it is. Like, I'm constantly telling Silas to put on clothes. He's always naked, too. <laughs> Wait, so... Do you, you like walk around naked just in general? Uh-huh. See? Like, like, do you ever just chill here all the time? Like All the time. Just naked? Mm-hmm. Probably right where Jeremy's sitting. No, I, I wear socks, though, because yeah, you're not the floor is really gross. But, I mean, you feel comfortable just chilling here naked, just like... <sighs> Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I was naked, but when we were texting this morning, I was naked. <laughs> so I'm not kidding. I'm dead serious. I was sitting right here, like, getting ready to watch football, and I was just stark-ass naked with socks on. Butt-ass topless. Do you get jealous because your dog's balls fucking touch your couch like my balls? No, I'm more jealous of the fact that my dog's everything is bigger than my everything. I love it when he, your dog would reposition itself on the couch, and his balls would just be hanging into his face. <laughs> Dude, I've woken up so many mornings with balls just, like... On my cheek, just just resting there, and I'm like, God damn it, dog! <laughs> <laughs> but they're so big. For all of you listeners out there, my dog's balls are planets. They are so big, and his sack, like he hits his kneecaps when he runs. All I know is, I would love to have a great day if I could afford one. My neighbor bought one for twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, no, because I mean, well, he bought his for twenty five hundred. Basically, <laughs> that's basically what I did. I thought I was getting a killer deal. And the other thing is I, w- I wanted to get um, not a purebred because their life expectancy is really, really short. But if you get them this when they're... Is this a purebred? No, he's a um, Great Dane Greyhound. So that's why he's kind of got that skinny figure and that really long nose. I dig it. Yeah. But uh, Wait, his tiny? his dad is still alive and his uncle, uh, he passed away at 12. So his dad's still alive and he's got to be what? Well, at least he was still alive. Because Great Dane's like six years, right? Yeah. So I made sure I got one that wasn't going to... Hopefully not. That's the worst part about when you have a dog. You're like, this dog's gonna die one day, and I don't know how. It's the most depressing thing in the world, man. So you just gotta tell him you love him every day. You ever lost a dog? Yeah, I lost a few dogs. I fucking that's the only thing I would cried over. Yeah, I watched my grandparents die in front of me, and I didn't even shed a tear when my dog died. I lost it. Bill Burr does an amazing bit about a dog. He's like. He's like, your dog's never going to get mad at you. He's like, you come home at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're actually going to yell at you. Your dog's going to be like, hey, man. You're fucking awesome, man. Hey, dude. And it's so true. Like, 
<laughs> well, many times that you wake your dog up, he's fucking ecstatic. To see. Oh, he's so stoked. If I come home like completely blackout drunk, where in the past like a girlfriend would be like, "I can't fucking believe you went out and did this. You're a fucking piece of shit." When I come home, he's just like, dude, you're so cool. Man. Yeah. Oh, you're so fucking you're cool. You're home. I can't wait Oh, my God. Hey, do you want my ball? <laughs> I'll give you my ball. I love you. <laughs> the loyalty from an animal is amazing. Oh, man. Especially him. I should have named him instead of Steve. I should have named him Shadow. Just follows you everywhere? Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere I go. And then, like, when I was living, I don't know if you knew this, I used to live in a trailer in the mountains. Huh. Yeah. So, it sounds like you. Go yeah, ahead. totally, right? Where so, at? In the in the middle, like Lytle Creek area, there was nobody. I love Nothing. Lytle Creek. What? Isn't there, really, there, isn't there a lot of tweakers out there? There's a shit ton of tweakers. I'm pretty sure I got a tweaky pad, and I just didn't like cook meth in it. I lived. <laughs> so you ate like no hookups, no nothing. Dude, it had running water and electricity. That's it. So yeah, you were, you were good then. Oh, it was great. It was fantastic. Like you had like gray water dump, you can shit, and it was fine. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, actually, most of the time I didn't even shit there. I would just go to the gym. I uh, didn't have a shower or like hot water. Didn't have any like real good amenities, like no hot water. You couldn't cook over there. Um, Which trailer was it? It was, dude. It was just a random ass. Just I have no fuck. I have no fucking clue. It was just one of these. Hey, we have this trailer that's available. We're looking for a tenant, and we thought this was uh, uh, one of my parents' friends. And and they told my parents they're like, oh, you're thinking about Andrew? Might want to move in here because he seems like a weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found it. I was like, "Yeah, that sounds like something I want to do." I'm a weird guy, <laughs> <laughs> so I did. And I lived in this trailer for for quite a while, almost a year. Was it like two hundred dollars a month? Dude, it was great. It was like three hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> I saved so much money. The only reason why I have all of these kick ass tools that I do is because of that. Like I saved. So- How long ago was this? Um, I moved here in April, and I moved to the trailer. Uh, I, don't, I was probably in the trailer for almost a year. Because I remember you lived in that fucking nice little um, townhome over there by the Victoria Gardens. Yeah, yeah, that place was pretty red. And then I, we had a house, and then and that's when I moved to L.A. after that. And I was in L.A. for like eight months, and then I went to the trailer, which was a total culture change. <laughs> <laughs> total, which, was, which was so weird because like I'm, I was like fresh single, right like just right out of the gun and I'm I'm living in a hustle bustle city of Echo Park where there's nothing but beautiful babies running around all over the place and that was just awesome and I, I like I dug it so hard cuz I would just go to a bar meet a girl like hey you want to come back to my place it was almost like it was really easy because if you have a place out there it's like it makes it even easier to where I got so bored with that and I was just like I don't want this isn't my life I don't want to do it like this my fucking constant sorrow so I'm like, I'm going to go move to a trailer and just go reflect. <laughs> You're such a hippie. Dude, dude I know. I'm such a weird kid, man. Oh, my God. I'm such a fucking weird kid. Who wants to go to like, hey, you could be just slamming hot chicks all the time to you want to kick it with a deer? You said it, that You were bored. I was bored. I don't. I was I, terribly I bored. It doesn't get boring to me. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know what's, I don't know what my problem is, man. I, I genuinely do get. If I sleep with like more than like two or three girls in a month, I feel dirty. Just like a pile of shit dirty. Like, I don't want to get out of bed kind of dirty. I'm like, ugh. Really, I'm that guy that's going to call you like, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, I know who you are. I know who you are. Just <laughs> my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> By dirty, do you mean like shameful? Very shameful. I, do you I just think feel. What has to do with the, uh, how deep you were into cr- being, uh, being Christian or Christianity? I think, it, yeah. I mean, I No, genuinely... I think you just mean because you don't know what these girls are banned. What's that? I think you just because you don't know where these girls have been, you think they're like... No, 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 nothing like that. No, that's why I Honestly, nothing like that. No, what it really comes down to is like, I genuinely, I fucking have always really cared for people. Even people I don't know or or shouldn't like at all. I just, I've always wanted to see something better for them. I don't know why. So, But when I feel like when I do that with a girl, girls will start getting feelings towards me or something, you know? And then I feel like a fucking asshole because I'm going to be like, hey... Mm, I don't have any feelings for you, and they're just—it's going to be the same routine. Ah, you, I, I thought you were different. You made me fucking love you. It's like, I oh my stuff. god, no, but it just <laughs> sucks. And then on top of it, it's like I know I have standards. I don't really want to be doing that. You know, yeah. I don't want to be like. I'm, I've never liked dudes that just go out and just like let's fuck everything. <laughs> it's like, I, that's so funny. yeah, he, he's that way. I'm not, I know you are. <laughs> I'm on your page with everything because see, that's why I was so overly honest about everything. Because the few um, you know friends with benefits that I did have, 
you know, I treated them like a girlfriend when I was with them, so they did get attached to me. I used to yell at me all the time. I'm like, but what I, are you doing? But I would make it super clear, like, all the time, be like, you know you're not my girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we're not in a relationship. Yeah, but he thought that worked. It doesn't work. They don't hear that shit. No. Every that girl thinks they're going to change Actions speak louder than words. I told him, I was like, why are you doing this? Like, move on. Go to the next one. Yeah, actions speak louder than words. And they don't care what's really coming out of your mouth. That's, that's how you treat them. And I've, I've, I've had to come to that realization, too. And honestly, like, uh, I don't blame most of the girls that were really mad at me because they probably thought, like, here's this really sweet guy who's, like, being really nice to me and, like, buying my dinners and all the time and, like, not being an asshole, driving to come see me. And then he just stops. Like, I totally get it. I get why you would be upset at that. And meanwhile, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, I'm just going to go take her out and probably put it in her. That's what I want to do. Yeah. And that's what kind of, it grosses me out personally. It's like, I don't want to be the guy who's just like, just using someone just for sex. You know what I mean? That's just shallow. And I don't feel like I'm too shallow. I'm very shallow, but not too shallow. You don't, Anyways, back to the cabin, you huh? You want to be looked at like a chauvinistic pig. I don't. I don't want to, because I, that's not how I was raised. You know, like my mother raised me, right? She raised me to like respect women and respect people. Especially women, so you know, it's a good motto to live by. That's what I've, that's what I've been doing. So, but I, al- I always get, find myself getting caught up in like the, the excitement and the new allure. It's like a new car smell, you know. Like you just get so fucking amped, and it just completely changes you. Then you have to I do this. Like, message. I got check right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to do like this reevaluation of yourself, and you're like, all right, who have I just become? Because I'm not becoming a good person right now. And then that's when like. That's when I did the trailer thing. I was like, I'm not being a good person. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go be by myself now. How long did you live in the trailer for? Almost a year. A little like eight months. Dude, I take so many showers. How was that, I, dude? Been? The best shape I've ever been in my life was when I lived there. Yeah, because you never wanted to be there. Well, I couldn't take a shower there, so I had to go to the gym. I went to the gym every day, dude. I was fucking. I looked good, man. Like I had a six pack. Like I've never had a six pack that predominant. Like that was like. What's up, dog? Like, I was just, like, looking good because I was either bored and needed to go to the gym or I had a shower. So I just go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> but it was completely... Man, that wasn't... <laughs> it just seems like it would have been hard. Like, I can't live it's like so that. It's so hard. It is so hard. Dude, after the military, I don't want to live, like, below what I'm living now. Mm-hmm. Super depressing. It was... Oh man, man. Super fun. I'm like so tripped out. Like I can, <laughs> I would go. N- I have to. I have to get up and walk. Like I try really hard in the podcast to stay seated. Mm-hmm. If I lived in the trailer, I'd just pace back I, and forth. I bet you. I bet you you wouldn't. At first, that's how I was. But then I went and I got a fucking bow and arrow. Game changer. Now I live in a trailer in the woods with a fucking bow and arrow. Do you know what you could do with that? Anything. Did you get good? I got so good. It was crazy. And then I bought a crossbow. And I got so good at that. Dude, I can just picture you out there like a by my, yeah. with your beard just shooting crossbows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I used to play this game by myself, which was stupid. I would get like, I would invite some people over, right? And we would have like a... a to your house? <laughs> to, my, to my trailer. <laughs> but what was cool about my trailer is like, it was all about the outdoors. Like, that's why you went up there. It felt like you were camping 24-7. So I had this nice little outdoor area with like a fire pit and like a picnic bench and shit like that. And I would invite people over to like, let's have a bonfire. And on one of these occasions, we all got pretty lit, pretty drunk, and, like, I just started shooting the arrows straight up into the sky and not telling anybody. <laughs> oh, my <Jeez>. God. <laughs> and then uh, one of my buddies, like, landed. It wasn't that close to him. Yeah, I don't think you really remember Andrew when he gets shit-faced. No. Yeah, because, like, I, I could totally see you doing that. But at Jeremy's over there, like, looks at you like a calm, collective, smart guy. And I'm like, oh, God, no. When, I, when, I get, when, they, when you liquor me up, I'm a fucking animal. I like to take my clothes off and fucking go foraging. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, my God. I woke up so many times naked, like, in the forest. Like, I don't know what the fuck I was doing. I found a creek one time, and it was, like, a game changer in my life. I was living next to a creek, and it was a hidden creek. Did you have your dog at this time? Yeah. So me and him would go walking to it all the time, and there was a little fish in there. So I would just sh- like I would sit there all day and probably either smoke weed or drink and just try to shoot these little minnows <laughs> with my bow and arrow, and it would never work. Would, this fish always beat me. But one day I woke up again, butt ass fucking naked next to this creek, and I was just like, "What the fuck? Have you ever seen the?" Um, How far was the house like that you like that you rented this trailer from? Um, well, like my neighbors. Yeah. 
Okay, so I had one neighbor that was actually pretty close, um, and it was on their property. But other than that, total seclusion. You can go anywhere. Um, I'm just trying to figure out if they saw you naked. I don't think so, because where I woke up was this creek was a, a hoof of a distance. It was probably like three quarters of a mile away. <laughs> so I got naked and just was just like, I'm going to go to the creek. <laughs> you have shoes on. Yeah, I totally had shoes on. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I take care of my feet. It's not like you woke up a slip Are you plan? I feel like. Do you guys? What's that? Oh my god! Is it on Beer Fest? No, no, no. The one where I was thinking of the animal too. I'm thinking. It's. I think it's Beer Fest. The one where who's the uh, Indian guy? Oh, uh, where he wakes yeah. wakes up next to the dead uh, deer naked. And he's like. Not again. <laughs> I, I can, that is my spirit animal. That is exactly how I get. It's like, let's get naked and forage. Yeah. There's no way I'm living in a trailer, dude. I couldn't do it. It wasn't that bad. I, I can see where you're saying how it would be awesome because I love going to Lotto Creek. I have, I have the best time. I could just sit out there by the water and drink beer and have the greatest time. It's so mm-hmm. relaxing and just clearing your mind. It's amazing. But uh, uh, Yeah. I just couldn't, like, try to pick a chick. Like, yeah, like, want to come back to my place? <laughs> worst yeah that was the worst and what's crazy is it actually i had quite a bit of girls that would go back there and they thought it was the shit and then i would judge them so hard i'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like then you're a pile of shit how could you do this to yourself <laughs> why would you sleep with me <laughs> do we talk about that all the time like we don't understand how women leave with men like, I don't get it. That's retarded, yeah. What do you mean? Like, 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 like rape. Like, how, like, it, like, even if you just meet a chick in, at a bar that you live next to, like, how would you just go home with a guy that you just met? I don't get that either. Like, you gotta be crazy. What if I'm fucking, what if I'm a killer or a rapist? You have no idea who I am. Well, I think about how many, like, people that I met a few times, I think, oh, this is a pretty cool guy. And then I meet him, like, on another occasion, and I'm like, whoa, this guy's who bad is that guy? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, what happens if you meet this guy who's totally normal and then he drinks three beers and he turns into a psychopath? Yeah, because there's a lot of dudes that deal with bipolar issues so they can be completely, like my father, completely normal in one setting and I shit you not, like, boom, now I'm a crazy asshole. There's a lot of dudes out there like that. Girls are so dumb if they do that. Yeah. But I always take them home if they want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's every guy at the same time though. you're like, yeah, I'm never going to be with you. Yeah, you're so stupid. <laughs> Any chick that's willing to sleep with a guy on the first day, it's like, yeah, you mm-hmm. might not be that, that girl. Mm-hmm. There's like no respect. How far are we? It's time to wrap it up. All right. Rich man, always a pleasure. Thank you. Mocast out. Mocast out. Mocast out.